Did you ever think you were made it? I feel I'm so close I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value came in, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to hate it. How they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. 2024 is here. Happy New Year, everybody. Hello. Uh, we haven't done a podcast for God knows how long now, by the way. This has been two weeks. It's almost been I two mean, weeks. I forgot. It feels like right. two Hi, weeks. Patrick Bet nice David, David good to meet you. Tom, what's your name? Tom? Adam, Adam, pleasure. Hello, nice monsieur. Hello, hello. 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 Hey guys, Ron. Good. Vinny, Vinny. Adam, Gang, Adam, Vinny. I hope you had a happy New Year. We haven't been doing this for a couple weeks. There's a lot of stories to cover. We were out of town. Uh, crazy stuff happened where we were at. When we were at Aspen... We went to a movie theater. Literally, the movie theater is called Isis Movie Theater. No joke. No joke. We'll tell you about it. We'll show you the picture of it. And then uh, 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 all of a sudden, we're out on the mountain skiing, you know, snowboarding. Let me rephrase the statement. <laughs> Attempting to snowboard yeah, and yeah, ski because yeah. it sounds a little too natural. And I get a text and a video from Mario thinking this is a joke. Like they hired somebody from the city to come and save this deer's life. <laughs> and the next thing you know, no. Mario literally saves a deer to the point where, by the way, the entire, Stop it. I'm, not, I'm actually not kidding with you. The entire city knew about it. <laughs> no, no, hear me out. The owner of the house shows up, says, we just want to thank on behalf of the city yeah, the- for you guys saving the deer's life. The next day, 200 elks have an emergency meeting. They show up. <laughs> I have the of video. The house. I have the video. I'll show I, you all this dude. stuff. Mario heard, got the key to the city. city. We'll we'll you'll see. It, uh, but maybe it was a clip from the movie. Unbelievable. Like, I don't can. believe. Leave the world I don't behind. believe Mario's all capable. Right. Now, okay. all, all of that stuff that's going on, all that stuff that's going on. Yesterday, I posted a tweet. Middle of the night, everybody texted me, pal, what happened? What happened? What happened? I said, look, it's only day one, and it's already a validation that this is going to be the year of chaos. Did you see this, the, the South Korea presidential candidate yes. getting stabbed oh my gosh. in the neck? So, right in a crowd. A guy runs up in a the, crowd. The moment you posted that, the moment you posted yeah. that, I just made a quick list. All right, so we're day one, right? right? A passenger plane exploding on the runway in Tokyo. Did you guys see that? Yes. Five people killed. A car filled with explosives plowing into a New York, uh, New York crowd in New York City. Tsunamis across Asia. Earthquakes in Asia. And the California high t- It's... Dude, 2024, we're coming in. By the way, check this out. You ready? <clears throat> Let's there go. There was one earthquake over 7.0, 1 over 6.0, 13 over 5, 84 over 4, 179 over 3, 235 over 2. Earthquake? Richter scale just yesterday. Just yesterday. So, guys, <clears throat> all of this stuff that's happening is has got a lot of people concerned. This is why, for me, I, the, listen, the number one affirmation for everybody this year should be future looks bright hmm. <laughs> the number one affirmation for anybody that follows the pbd podcast should be future looks bright and that's why we're doing this only today for this podcast because it's, it's new year's first podcast we're doing you order a one of these hats which rob you have it up there right there so we can give this to the entire audience before we go into all our stories you order one of these hats i want this gear sported everywhere with future looks bright we're going to throw in another hat on the house and another shirt, Future Looks Bright, on the house. You can buy whatever else you want, but I want everybody this year wearing the hat, Future Looks Bright, because it shocks the crap out of everybody. Because when chaos happens, when scary times happen, they want you to be afraid. They want you to shiver. Chaos cannot stand it when it's scary times and a group of people decide to stand up towards it and say, how the hell am I not scaring you? How am I scaring everybody else but not you? You're going to say, because I believe, ready, that future, future looks, looks bright. bright, period. So the, the code for this, Rob, what is the code for this you said? PBD Podcast 2024, all one word, lowercase. So can you put that in the description yep. as well for people to order Gordo or hat, future looks bright, PBD Podcast 2024, put it all together. You'll get a second hat for free. And you'll get a Future Looks Bright shirt for free. It's like $70 free stuff I'm throwing over to you. Just today, this is a only one-day PBD podcast order thing we're doing. Tom. You know, last year, 2023, you boldly said, and it was absolutely correct, that 2023 would be the year of investigations. Yep. That's what happened. And now you're saying 2024, the year of chaos. I hope you're wrong, but boy, yesterday started with a bang. Oh. It's pretty. I don't think I'm going to be wrong. I think it's going to be crazy, but I'm telling you right now. I'm I think tell- you're right. I, I wish it was different. I think this. you're right. No. So j- last night, Jennifer's laying next to me and says, babe, didn't you call this year the year of chaos? What the hell is going on? I said, babe, here's how you got to look at this. When you want to build muscle, you need the most resistance. 
Okay, period. That's how you get tougher. This is going to be a year of resistance. Just Mm -hmm. know you're going to be pushed and challenged and bullied, and you have to stay bulletproof, strong, confident, optimistic, because your family, your friends, your relatives, your coworkers, your peers, the people that report you, the people report to you, everybody's going to need a level of optimism and confidence going into this year. It is going to be weird. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. It's going to be very weird. I have a whole different thing already written for 2025, but we're still 2024. Let's make it first. Yeah, absolutely. 2025. So life is going to put a bunch of plates on the Having said that, gang, go place the order. Future looks bright. Let's sport it. Tag me. Tag us. We'd share a bunch of it as well with uh, our community. Okay. Stories to get into. Large number of Americans, you ready? Want a strong, rough, anti-democratic leader. What a title right there, right? I love it. They want a strong, rough, anti-democratic. It's almost like, you know, you could have replaced a large number of women want a strong, rough, yeah. Ooh, anti-democratic God. husband. But the title is actually large number of Americans want a strong, rough, anti-democratic leader. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Away. Nikki Haley, I got a message for you. Nikki Haley as Trump's VP. She doesn't reject idea. Says they would work well together. Oh we'll talk God. about that. Marine becomes second state to uh, uh, Maine. Maine. I'm sorry. Maine becomes second state to ban uh, Trump uh, from uh, 2024 ballot. Tom's got some thoughts on that. Uh, California Secretary of State refuses to remove Trump from the ballot. California becomes first state. Ready, folks? This is exciting news, right? If you want to move to California... To offer health insurance to all undocumented immigrants. Yeah. How awesome is that? Oh, yeah. Isn't that great? You know what? Impressive. That's kind of like working at Google headquarters or Apple, and Apple becomes the first company in the world to offer non employees badges. Wow. To come in. Oh, what a noble wow, thing to do, man. America, California, Newsom. What a sweetheart of a uh, guy you are. God bless Canada you. praises law requiring. Tampons in male bathroom because you know we need it. That's what matters, dude. He knows nah, that's a leader. Every month, Pat. that's a every leader. Every month, there's only one yeah. bathroom that needs that. You, you U.S. To the U.S. Women. boxing to allow trans women to compete against other female boxers. So U.S. boxing is now allowing trans women to compete. Oh, oh, oh yeah. And wait till you hear what what they have to go, go through to do it. Travis Kelsey is officially the champion of game day advertising, kicking everyone's butt. I know you got something to say about that. Yeah. L.A. office building sells. <clears throat> For $153.5 million, $115 million less than its sale price a decade ago. The question is, do, do the bathrooms in that building have tampons? That's what I'm concerned they about if they do or not. <laughs> they All bathrooms. Diversity, Both bathrooms. equity, and inclusion programs took a hit in 2023. Fair, fa- Forbes favorite 2023. Forbes, what happened to you? Honestly, what the hell happened to you? I got a message for Dylan Mulvaney. You have at one of your events the best celebrity interviews of the year. Seriously? <laughs> Absolutely pathetic. By the way, check this one out. This is from USA Today. This is not Fox. A Frank coalition, black, Hispanic, young voters abandon Biden as election year begins. When you abandon, you leave him for somebody else. Who are they going to? Ooh. I don't know. We're going to find out. Democrats, Mayor Chicago, New York, Denver uh, reach breaking point from migrant surge. White House says border search not usual. It's just, you know, some normal stuff that's going on. Of course, nothing big going on. Uh, Bill Clinton to be unmasked as Doe 36 and identified more than 50 times in Jeffrey Epstein's doc dump. Do you have that one video with Epstein's brother or, or you know, trying to get that file? If you don't have it, I'll send it to you. <laughs> this, this news is going to break some people's hearts, so you may want to skip this one or earmuffs. Um, beer drinking in America fell to the lowest points this century. Mm. Mid- Bud Light boycott, tough year for beer. Okay, and so again, I have a good, I have a good thing I, I, for. Well, so, you should use that. All right, so here's the next one, folks. If you're ultra rich, to, to all these rich, greedy people, check this out. Ultra rich buy ultra luxury. You ready? What word do you think comes afterwards? <laughs> Housing, cars, vacation home. No, no. Luxury counseling to get kid, kids into mm-hmm. Harvard. You know how much they're charging? We'll tell you about it here in a minute. For happening for happiness in a new year, stop overdoing everything. Wall Street Journal. Adam's got some uh, wisdom to share with us on that story. Mm. Just, he, he's going to give this in a few minutes here. So, having said that, let's get into one of our stories. Which story do we want to get into? Uh. Uh, I think Rob, you were talking about the audience wants to do Epstein. Let's go into that one. Bill Clinton to be unmasked as Doe 36 and identified more than 50 times in Epstein's doc dump. This is a New York Post story. Rob, if you can find that clip as well, that'd be great. If not, I'll text it to you when I pass it over to somebody. 
So uh, Bill Clinton, be identified as John Doe 36 in court documents linked to Jeffrey Epstein's case, appearing more than 50 times in the records related to Virginia's 2015 Lawsuit. The reference uh, largely concerns efforts to compel Clinton to testify against Epstein and Jelaine Maxwell. No illegal activity by Clinton is expected to be uh, indi- uh, in- indicated in the documents. The unsealed documents are expected to reveal over 170 individuals with ties to Epstein, including accusers, alleged victims, and those associated with his inner circle, Prince Andrew. Uh, accused by Virginia as well of sexual involvement, is one of the notable names. The documents may also include testimony from Jane Doe, 162, about a 2001 party at Epstein's townhouse where Virginia alleged she was introduced, she was instructed to have sex with Prince Prince Andrew. So, uh, uh, Vinny, what new story do we have on this, and what should people be expecting coming up this week? Well, I... I tweeted this last night, Pat. Regard, uh, this is what is the scariest thing about this whole situation. If today they release something with proof that Bill Clinton had sex with an underage girl, guess what would happen to him, Pat? Absolutely nothing. And that's a, that's a sad fact. He's untouchable. His wife is untouchable. Bill Gates is untouchable. Nobody can mess with these people. Pat. And I want you guys to know this. There was These are in older emails. A high-ranking J.P. Morgan executive sent an email cracking a joke about Epstein showing up to a concert when, with Miley Cyrus when she was 15 years old. This is Chase. These are the top brass at, at Chase. But, uh, they were saying um, they allegedly opened private banking accounts and credit card accounts for 18-year-olds said to be Epstein's inner entourage, joking he was their sugar daddy. And J.P. Morgan knew he was a pedophile. All these people know that they work with him, and that's why they just they had to pay recently this in 2023 290 million dollars, like hush money, to all these victims. But uh, I, I, I just think. Uh, even if it comes out, Pat, nothing's going to happen to him. And that's, just, that's the sad, scary thing is that he is untouchable. Nothing is going to happen to him. Tom, do you have any thoughts on this? <clears throat> well, the, the list of names doesn't seem um, like it's told us anything new. We knew Randy Andy was there. Um, Randy it, Andy. That's what they call No, no, that's what the uh, tabloids call Prince, Prince Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. yeah, that's the headline over there, Daily Mail, Randy Andy. And uh, his mom was upset, um, but, uh, God rest her soul, before the queen passed away. So we've kind of seen all this come and go, and it, it doesn't seem anything new. The number of trips, you know, 50 times, you know, I, maybe Clinton can say it's 25 because that was round trips um, or something. But I don't see anything new here. I don't see any, like, brand new names. But, but here, can I ask you a question, though, Pat? Why are they redacting the 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 criminals in this? Like, okay, I hide the people. I don't want any of the women or underage boys. I don't know. All these names obviously keep those people. I don't want them public. Every male that went there, especially after he was convicted of pedophilia, I want to see their names. Who, why are we protecting these people? I don't understand. Well, they're going to release it. So if you go to the story, Rob, go to the story on Newsweek, which I think they're probably doing the best job on this. I'll send it to you. Uh, the title of it is Jeff. Uh, if you ch- type in, I just send it to you. Jeffrey Epstein's list of associates. Uh, uh, type in Jeffrey Epstein's list of uh, right there. Number three. Number three. Uh, list of it there. Okay, they go up. Keep going up. Obviously, they're gonna put Trump on the front page. Keep going up. Yeah, of course. Of course, they are. Even up. though he didn't go to the island. Keep going up. Keep going up. Keep going up. Keep going up. So, is this the one? No, yeah, this right, is, there, right there. Right. Uh, uh, that demon. He looks like a demon. So, who is the associate list? Okay, what what's the date on this, Rob? See if this is one one. December twentieth. No, no, I have a one one one. I just sent you. So, if you go to this one, so so it's interesting. By the way, very go up on this story. Look what the title was on this one. Look what they put on the title on this one. Look what we just accidentally found. Jeffrey Epstein's list of associates sparks. Oh, no. Conspiracy theory. This is just 12 days ago. Okay. (laughs) Now watch the one that just came out yesterday. Rob, put the one that I just sent you yesterday. What happened, Newsweek? Why are you changing the title? Now it's no longer a conspiracy. List of associates, what we know. As names name. to be revealed. So, go again, they use the same exact picture. Yep. Okay. Go a little lower. What is happening? So, let's look at the questions, Rob. Let's see what questions they got. So, will there be any new allegations? Yes. The Okay. So, that, that's the new thing unsealed that Tom's saying there's nothing new. There will be new. This upcoming uh, batch of court documents will include names of additional Epstein associate, alleged perpetrators, and co conspirators. Okay. That's good. Why are they being released now? Because a Loretta Presca, the judge, held in December... There was no legal justification for continuing to keep anonymous to 150. Wow. 
Okay. So she's like, we got to release it. Fine. Go to the next question. Next question is, what, where are the documents coming from? They're coming from a, a lawsuit filed by Virginia Jeffrey, which we just talked about, an alleged trafficking victim uh, against Epstein's jailed former girlfriend, Jelaine Maxwell. She has alleged that Maxwell arranged for her to have sex with Epstein with other prominent men, including, okay, keep going lower. Are the names of Epstein's associates already known? There has been extensive litigation in the Epstein case, and many names have already been known. They include those accused of wrongdoing, but also people who work for Epstein, flew on his plane, or visited his home. Some were mentioned, okay, are there any names of particular interest? Yes, the court, will, the court records will contain details of Jane Doe 162, okay, so we know that one. Keep going a little lower. Uh, is Bill Clinton likely to be compl- implicated in the wrongdoing? No, she made no allegations of wrongdoing by Clinton, and there is no indication the sealed records contain any wrongdoing on his part. Okay, could this be embarrassing for Clinton? Yes, sure. because she met Clinton in uh, Little St. James, uh, Epstein's private island. Maxwell had claimed in court that Clinton had never been there. Whoops. Okay, so there goes a mistake. Which version is correct? Flight logs. So look, I mean, this is a real deal that's coming out. Okay, this is a real deal that's coming out for whatever reason. A bunch of different mm-hmm. uh, people were writing yesterday that this person. By the way, some of the names like Spielberg's on this list. Oh, there, there's some very interesting names. Oh on yeah, this I list. mean Tom. With Tom, every, dude, everybody went there, and the problem is it was post pedophilia uh, prostitution conviction. And Bill Gates, Pat, I don't know. People, people have to like really look at these old videos. I sent Rob a video, Pat, when they interviewed. I forgot the woman's name. She interviewed Melinda Gates, and if you see towards the end of this one minute clip, she goes. I saw him, I met him, I felt evil personified. Like, that's the reason she left him. Bill Gates, listen, don't be fooled by this whole, um, I talk like Kermit the Frog, and I, here's vaccines, and he's a humanitarian. Pat, can, I, can I show this? Look, oh, we showed this Listen to how disgusting. Ago. Go ahead. She's re- look, she had nightmares about meeting him. Go ahead. You know, it was also widely reported that Bill had a, a friendship or business or some kind of contact with Jeffrey Epstein and that you were not... Uh, that that was very upsetting to you. Did that play a role in the in the divorce at all in this process? Yeah, as I said, it's not one thing. It was many things. But I did not like uh, that he'd had meetings with Jeffrey Epstein. Was this? Mm-hmm. And you made that clear to him. I made that clear to him. I also met Jeffrey Epstein Once. exactly did you? one Once time. Did you? Yes, because I wanted to see who this man was, and. Um, I regretted it from the second I stepped in the door. He was abhorrent. He was evil personified. I had nightmares about it afterwards. So, you know, my heart breaks for these young women because that's how I felt. And here I'm an older woman. My God, I feel terrible for those young women. It's awful. You felt that the moment you walked in. I didn't realize that. Yeah. And you shared that with Bill and he still continued to spend time with him? Any of the questions remaining about what Bill's relationship there was. Those are for Bill to answer. That's for Bill. Okay. But That's I for Bill. Very clear That's how evil. I felt about him. Dude, think about this. This she, she has a head on her shoulders. She met him one time and she knew like By the way, let me tell you what happened. Yesterday the kids we were watching a movie Tetris. Tom, have you seen this Tetris movie that just came out? Not yet. Okay, you have to, I thought about you. You gotta watch it. It's a Tetris movie that came out on Apple. It actually did a really good job at how the history of it, the Russia being involved, the mob mm-hmm. being involved. And Documentary you, part? you know who was involved in the deal with Tetris? You know who? Robert Maxwell. You know who Robert Maxwell was? He's Jelaine Jelaine Maxwell's Robert Maxwell father. was Jelaine Maxwell's father. Wow. You know how the movie ends at the end with Robert Maxwell? Robert Maxwell didn't have a million dollars to pay Russia to win the rights to Tetris licensing because he was going bankrupt. Wow. He ended up stealing $900 million of pension funds from his people, from other people, ended up doing a $5 billion whatever lawsuit. He, go, he dies, goes to jail. His son, who's in it as well, same thing. He has issues backing him up and then his daughter. I mean, the genetics comes mm-hmm. from a lineage of people that are doing some shady stuff here. So I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I know a lot of people who are linked to this. I, I'm not, I don't know a lot of people that are linked to this. I know a lot of the people who are linked to this are probably sitting here this week talking to a bunch of lawyers because who else can you kill? But, that's well, what I was going to say. Did, did you find that clip, Rob, about the uh, – uh, can you play that clip? Check this out. <clears throat> Guy goes in asking for basic report on Epstein of the day. Check this out. Who is out. this? This is his brother, right? This is his brother. Watch this. 
Presbyterian Lower Man Lower Manhattan. Okay, but as of right now, you're telling me you can't find the PCR report. Not for the tenth of this August, two thousand nineteen. Max, no. Maxwell's brother. Not no. in. Not, it's not. Not in Maxwell. Epstein's, Epstein's brother. Epstein's database. brother. I don't know yes. why. If it's supposed to be there, we'll find out. But first, you've got to get the letters of administration before you can take them anywhere. Yeah, you see, because the date on here is the, the 10th of 19th. That's the day they found him, they took him, and he was dead. Well, then they might have taken him directly to the morgue. No, he was in the hospital. I have photographs of him in the hospital, too. Oh, well, I'm, I, you, you didn't tell me that. I'm, yeah. I'm just going by. Yeah, no, no, I understand. I'm just trying to explain yeah. what I know. Yeah, yeah, well, I don't know what happened, but... Uh, so far, he's not in the fire department database. Weird. I don't know why. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, too many, too many. <laughs> Listen, man. The look. Is it still going? And uh, could they have taken him yes. somewhere? Well, see, he, he he has a photograph of the fire department personnel. That doesn't, that doesn't oh, generate oh. documentation. It's yeah. just a photograph. Yeah. What, what did he say? I couldn't hear. He said that because you see the fire department. Just because you see the fire department personnel there, that doesn't mean they provided documentation. It could they have told me they did. I spoke to them. Yeah. And they were the ones who suggested I get the PCR report. Mm -hmm. Well, well, they're saying one <laughs> thing, but the computer is saying something else. You can else. pause it right there. Go Listen, ahead, Adam. There is no telling how high up this goes. And how deep this goes and what tentacles this um. will lead to. There's no telling. There's a lot of very rich, powerful, access-driven people who are basically behind closed doors doing everything they can to make sure the truth never comes out. Okay? Did Epstein King kill himself? We all want to know. Here's what we do know. This story is not going away. As much as the rich and the powerful and the accessible want this gone, okay? There's a yearning and a clamoring in the American people and the people worldwide that are like, not so fast, buddy. That ain't happening on my watch. But always, always, I'm glad you brought up the Robert, Robert Maxwell Tetris thing. FTM, follow the money. They always say access is power. Now, just because you went on Epstein's plane doesn't make you guilty because we all know that one of the major things he was peddling, not even money, not even access, was blackmail, was extortion, was hush money. We know that. So RFK went on his plane. He admitted it twice. With his kids. With his family. Okay, cool. Nothing wrong with that. But we also know that Les Wexler, owner of Victoria's Secrets, who Whitney Webb has done an amazing job. She's been on the podcast with us a few times. Are basically saying, what's going on here? Okay, Leon Black, owner of Apollo Management, right? Multi multi billion dollar asset manager paid him a half a billion half dollars a in billion consulting with fees. That? Consulting? What's going on with yeah. that? <clears throat> so we all know that access is power. So just if we understand the basic template is, hey, listen, this guy's got money. Follow the money. Access is power. Cool. We're gonna get on this plane. We're gonna do meetings. <laughs> just because you go into somebody's meeting, go to a going on on an island, doesn't make you guilty. Now, do I think Bill Clinton was on that island, probably banging some chicks instead of Hillary? Yes. Does that mean that they were under eighteen? We don't know. But the reality is this, and this is the bottom line: the story is not going away. The people want answers. The I don't, okay, <clears throat> I agree that the story is not going away. But I'm telling you right now, when it's that high, Pat, and it's that that powerful. Evil, because that's what it comes down to. You know, you no. know, Vinny. People thought the mob was never going to come down. People in you, you were in New York. People thought the mob was never, ever. They, the, what was the movie called? The Untouchables, yeah. right? Kevin, everything Costner. was the Untouchables. You can never touch these guys. They have them in their pocket. They have the judge in their pocket. They have the cops in their pocket. Eventually, someone's going to say, "Bro, I'm not doing it." You know what the story was about Tetris? One of the guys that worked for Gorbachev yesterday, and when I'm watching the movie, one of the guys in the movie that was working for Gorbachev was negotiating a side deal with Robert Maxwell mm. to get a check from him, and he kept wanting to take the deal away from the other honest guy. So eventually, the girl that's chasing him saying, why do you want this deal to be with Maxwell? And he's like, what are you doing? Isn't it Russia first? Isn't Homeland Country first? And then eventually he publicly gets caught. The fact that he was getting money from Maxwell directly in a communistic nation. She finds out. She tells Gorbachev, boom, he goes down. Mm -hmm. Moral of the story is when you try to pay off so many people, mm -hmm. eventually one person's going to be like, I didn't get my money.
What are you going to do now? Of so, course. And when there are kids involved, when there's kids involved, I don't know. You, you may be right. You may not be right. But the fact that judges won't, would you have thought a year ago that judges are going to come and say, no, nah, I won't know the list. Would you have thought that? I, I, I wouldn't have thought that. But when I like and I, I understand the mafia part because, you know, mafia. And, but, Pat, when it's when it's presidential, when it's banks, when it's the, those guys protect like dude brother they these people watching. are more powerful than the mafia that's what, that's what i'm saying that's of. what i'm saying but but you He's know what is you guys are on the same page oh yeah 100 percent. so all and at the end just to close it back the only thing that gives me happiness in here is that god we we might not hold them our courts might not hold them accountable god at the end of the day will hold their feet to the fire trust me that's Tom. that's and the only way it makes me feel good I, i'm looking forward to the rest of the names and the dates so that people like our friend mm-hmm. great journalist can now run down the trails paint the picture put it all together like a puzzle but right now, it's like we're getting this big tease. Hey, there's more names. There's more names. Mm-hmm. You're going to unseal them. And they're like, Prince Andrew, wait, we know that name. And that's why yeah. I say there was, no- to me, to my ears, there was nothing new yet. Bill Clinton, okay, now it's 50 times. Okay, well, we kind of knew he was there more than once. All of that is there. I want to see the rest of the names, and I want to see some journalists paint the pictures yep. and run down, just like Whitney Webb has done, because now you've got something to work with and to go chase. And I'm Rob, get, to it. get Whitney Webb on standby, buddy. All right, let's go to the next story. So that one is the first story. So before we get into the next story, we got a bunch of them here. Let's go to our sponsors first, American Hartford Gold. So look, I've been in the financial industry since 9-11, the day before 9-11, and I've owned stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, crypto, gold, you name it, I've owned it. But the one thing that's very important part of my portfolio all these years is gold. I love having a percentage of my net worth in gold that I have access to in case of many different things. That's why we chose to work with our new sponsor, American Hartford Gold. If you have retirement funds that you cannot afford to lose, American Hartford Gold will ship physical gold or silver directly to your door. Also, if you have retirement funds that you can't afford to lose, now is the time to call American Hartford Gold, a precious metal dealer you can trust. They have the finest products, amazing customer service, and a buyback commitment. They've earned a five-star rating from thousands of reviews and an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. Tell them I sent you, and they'll send you up to $5,000 worth of free silver on your first order. So click on the link in the description or call 866-939-6984. Again, 866-939-6984. Okay, next story. L.A. office building sells for $153.5 million, $115 million less than its sale price a decade ago. This is a market watch story. Um, page nine. Page nine. Here we go. L.A. Aon Center, a 62-story office building. Rob, can you pull up the picture to see what it looks like? Was sold for $153 million, marking the largest fourth quarter deal for office space in the western United States as reported by Newmark Group Inc. The buyer, Carol Wood LPA, L.A.-based private equity firm, acquired the building Located in downtown L.A.'s financial district, the property was 64% lease at the time of sale with diverse tenants, including Aon and Morrison and Fo- uh, F- uh, Forster. Uh, the sale price represents a significant drop from its 2014 purchase price of $268 million. Unfreaking believe <laughs> Vinny, from $268 million to $153 million. Uh, the pandemic-induced challenges in, the, in office occupancy contributed to this decrease. With the U.S. office occupancy rate ranging from 40% to 65% spring of 2023. Tom, you hear the story. How much of this is California? How much of this is real estate? How much of this is interest rates? How much of this is just working from home? Uh, this is California number one. This is 70. I'm gonna, so I'm going to say this. This is 70% California. You want to know why? If that building was in the middle of Miami, Adam, downtown Miami right now, it would be 80% leased in, in 90 days because there's it's so many uh, businesses have come to South Florida. There's plenty of demand. So why is it selling like this in California? There's not demand. Why is there not demand? It's California policies, taxation, you know, uh, downtown crime, homelessness all around downtown. Where do you go? If you work in that building, where do you go for lunch? You got to see it downtown, folks. It's really bad. So I say 70% California. And probably 25% interest rates. Mm-hmm. That's kind of driving it. But look who's buying it. As we predicted, a private equity firm swooping in, buying undervalued assets. Ladies and gentlemen, that's their business. And they're, and they're conducting their business very well right now. But that's my take. Yeah, Dana White said it best. Miami's the new L.A. 
So you saw what he said when he was talking, I think, to the Nelk boys. So shout out to you, Dana White. By the way, Miami's pretty packed, guys. We're good. We don't need anyone yeah, else. Right, Prices is already I, up. I'll, yeah. But Miami's the new L.A. Rob, show the picture. Um, L.A. used to be where all the cool kids hung out. Now it's all Miami. L.A. used to be the scene. Now it's all Miami. Sorry, it is what it is. Um, but the reality is this. What we've learned since COVID is that residential real estate has skyrocketed as far as supply and demand. And commercial real estate has plummeted. And whether you call it WFA or WFH, work from home or work from anywhere, a lot of companies simply don't need all that space. And some deals, private equity firms, whether it's even BlackRock, that's buying up a lot of uh, residential stuff. And we talked about Blackstone, whatever's going on with that, the mortgage stuff with Brandon. Uh, They just don't need all that space. And people are just working from home. And whether it's California and all the ridiculous laws and red tape that they put up there and people leaving and Gavin Newsom being the U-Haul employee of the year multiple times over. It is what it is at this point in California. So, Pat, if you if you bought something like that, if like you you have it now, you got it basically for half off, right? It was half off. Give or, give or take. Give or take. How long do you think somebody could just buy that and sit on it? Will, will it go back up in price? O- only if you're able to take that from 60% to 90%, 85%. The key to selling a property, like, you know, we're looking at properties right now. The proper, one property we're looking at is smaller, but it's leased at 80%. It's 50% more than another property that's bigger, but it's 100% vacant. People are not buying the property for... You know, just how big and massive and beautiful the property is. They want to know who's leasing it, who's already in there, and how many years. So the way they'll look at it is they'll look at the list and they'll say, we have 22 tenants. These guys got 19,000 square feet, and their lease expires 2029. These guys have such and such. Their lease expires 2032. Oh, wow, it's a 10-year lease. Yes, these guys. And then you're like, ah, oh, okay, average about seven and a half years. Got it. Okay, here's the offer. They do the math. Here's the offer for the property. It's simple as uh, what it is. So if a company like that is buying it, they know they're going to fill this place up and they're going to make their money. They're not worried about whether they're going to lose money or not. The average person that buys it, it's going to be a different story. These guys are mathematicians. They got it. Everything they buy, it's purely logical, not emotional. Very rarely emotional. And if it's emotional, it's because it's a very well-known building. This is not an emotional building. This is just a big-ass building. All right, let's go to the next story. What's the story with Tucker and Ben Shapiro fighting, by the way? Tucker Carlson launches launches stunning attack on Ben Shapiro. He obviously doesn't care about America, uh, is what Tucker says. He accused Shapiro of not caring about the United States, particularly due to Shapiro's focus on the Israel-Gaza conflict, stating, I can't imagine how someone like that could get an audience of people who claim to care about America because he doesn't, obviously. Carlson expressed frustration with the right wing's intense focus on foreign conflicts such as Ukraine and Israel while neglecting pressing uh, domestic issues like the nation's financial stability and immigration concerns. He questioned why they weren't addressing these vital matters, saying... They have said nothing about that, and they're focused with laser intensity on foreign conflicts. They don't care about this country at all. Would you have ever thought that a Tucker Carlson is going to call Ben Shapiro out and yeah. say, you don't care about the country at all? Adam, well, what are your for thoughts? For me, I'm looking at this, actually. I think they both have their um, uh, right sides of the argument. But this is beyond <clears throat> politics. This is beyond uh, anything. This is personal. The, for, they've been feuding on this uh, topic for months now. And we all know that Ben Shapiro, uh, as smart as he is, obviously is an American Jewish man. Tucker Carlson is an American Christian man. Ben has vested interests in what's going on in Israel. He's an Israel advocate. So I totally understand both sides of the argument. Like, you're an Armenian American, right? If there was something going on in Armenia, you would have some things to say about it. If there was something going on in Assyria, there's no Assyria, but exactly, yeah. <laughs> you'd have some, if some people going Watch on your language in, a little bit. If the, sorry, and, and Modesto, if something was happening in Modesto, if something was going on in yeah. you know whatever Scandinavia, Canada, Canada, going Canada, on Canada, Canada Tom. Tom would have something to say about it. So, you you know, uh, uh, America is made up of a coalition of people from other countries. That's what make America so great is that we've taken in immigrants a little too much these days, a little from all over the world that have their backgrounds. I like what Dana White also had to say is like you're not Italian American. American, you're just freaking American. You're not African American. You're just freaking American. You're not Mexican American. You're just American. So we have to get back to the sense of roots and purpose in America. America first. I, under, I do understand that. But at the same time, we have something called domestic policy and foreign policy. We have something called multilateralism and called unilateralism. 
We need to stand by our allies, whether it's the EU, whether it's Australia, whether it's Canada, whether it's Israel, whether you can some kind of say Ukraine. I don't know about that, <laughs> but that that we need to have our allies back and our allies need to know. But what do you think about this? I understand I, what you just stated the facts. I get the facts. What's so how do you I process think it's this? personal? You think this is personal? Yes. Uh, OK, so what do you think about it? What do you I, think about you know, it? I, 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 to just say he doesn't care about America, I don't think. That's the case. I think, and obviously Adam nailed it, he is Jewish, and it's just for months. It was for the first month and a half. All it was was Israel, this, bombed them, wiped them out, didn't care about the civilians, didn't care about anything, just wiped them out. So I could see how Tucker would get upset, but I I do see Tucker's point in the fact that, Pat, it's like everybody's looking outward, outward, outward. And you said this, I think, uh, two months ago when you're like one year. Shut everything down. I'm sorry, everybody. Take a time out. We're going to turn around and look at America and not help everybody and give away. And, and, and I think that's the, that's the way to do it. Hiring freeze, recruiting freeze. Every, One year we're taking no immigrants. No immigrants. Yeah. Pat, Pat, no nothing. Not even yeah. get, Ukraine. Sorry, guys. Deal with it. Deal with the war that you've been losing from the beginning. Tom. Both of these guys are media experts, and Tucker knows exactly what he's doing. Obviously, you don't care about America. One millisecond later, a synapse in Tucker Carlson's head is telling him that that's going to be the click head, uh, headline, mm-hmm. that that's going to get people into you think You think that's what you think in his mind he's trying to get a short clip out? No, no. His mind, he's trying to get his point out, yeah. and he understands how to get people doing that. Yeah. Because I, ha- I have a lot of respect for Tucker Carlson, both as a newsman and as an American and as an entrepreneur, and I think he knows exactly what he's doing. What he is pointing out is saying that domestic policy is so important right now. Look what's happening to our cities. Look what's happening to yeah. our economy. Look at the interest rates, affordable housing, education in America. Make a list. And Tucker is saying domestic policy is so important right now, and you guys are preoccupied with all these foreign conflicts. Shapiro on the other side is saying, look what's happening to Israel, because he's got a very strong pro-Zionist Israel flag that he waves. I think I think it's as simple as that. And Tucker knows how to get the dialogue spun up and saying, obviously, you don't care about America. That gets people talking about it. And Tucker's point, I think, is stronger than Ben's point. It's not to say that there's no point in in Israel, uh, you know, Hamas and the Palestinian conflict that's going on. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the domestic point that Tucker's making is pretty freaking powerful. And he's asking people, look at all the issues we got to deal with in here and I, I bet he would agree with you 100%. You know, let's have a moratorium on uh, immigration and then get it done right and do the following things to deal with domestic issues. Yeah, I can't imagine if a president gets elected and says, okay, guys, you elected me. Here's what we're doing. One year, we're not taking any immigrants, period. One year, we're not giving any money away to anybody else when it comes down to war. One year, the world's got to figure out their problems for one year. And let's see if everybody else can handle it or not. A year later... We'll go ahead and address other people's problems. And here's how you do it. You make a list of problems you're having in America. Just so you know where you live, where your kids go to school, where your family lives, where you spend time working, where your job is, where your company is, where you spend most of your life is here. These are the problems we got. Boom, 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 boom. Let's address these. I think we're going to need about a year to address this. Then we can look at other people's problems. I think that's a very logical uh, approach of taking it to solving issues. Um, do, do I think it's like the two heavyweights of the conservative side going at it as well? And there's an element to it that's entertaining and they both maybe even want it. Maybe. I don't know. Um, you know, obviously you saw what happened with the, uh, Pierce Morgan when the whole Israel and Gaza debates, all the comedians he was putting them up. still doing it. 18 million, 20 million, still 12 happening. million, 6 million. Yeah. Like, but this is working. Keep doing it. Of keep course. doing it. Keep doing it. But there's also another part of it that's about guys. You know, this has been a chaotic run we've had since 2016. Let's see if we can lower the temperature by 2025. Mathematically impossible to lower the temperature in 2024. Impossible to lower the temperature in 2024. But in 2025, there's something we can do to lower the temperature. And in 2020, 2025, in 2024, the best part, if we can pull this off, it's going to be very hard to do, unifying people in 2020. Four would be by far the most important thing to do. If these guys can get around the same table, them, others from the conservative side, can you imagine a symposium? Think about the symposium. You ready? Tucker, Ben, Musk, Rogan, put Trump, put a bunch of these guys, okay, at a RFK, 
at one event, oh my God. what do you think would happen with that? Ugh. You don't have an arena big enough to want to fill how nope. many people are going to want to be there. Nope. And you know what they talk about? Let me tell you what we're talking about here. I'm a humanist. My name is Elon Musk. Yes, I'm trying to build a, you know, civilization or what do you call it? A colony in on uh, Mars. Mars, whatever. But at the same time, I love America. I love this country. Hey, I'm such and such, but I love America. Hey, I'm a Jew, but I love America. Hey, I'm a this, but I love America. Think about what kind of a message that would send to the world if some of the sharpest, brightest people unified around America as an idea, what that would do to the world. We got to figure out if we need unifiers and synergists in 2024. We've, we've, had so, we've had such a run of dividers back to back to back to back to back. We need a new run of synergists and unifiers. Sit down, talk. You want to argue? Great. Just the other day, uh, Rob, did you see the Seth MacFarlane debate with Bill Maher on the vaccine? Did you see that? Yeah. What would you think about I, it? I, I loved it because, well, two things. A, I got to see, like, I, 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 I've, I've been around Seth MacFarlane yeah. at, a, at a nightclub. Yeah. He was j- drinking Jack Daniels. Really, really, really cool guy. Really, really generous. But to see that, you know, they're both obviously liberals. For him to... To have that point of view and for them to actually, Pat, have the conversation and it not become, no, no, you're wrong, you're wrong. And then the conversation stop. At least I got to. How long How long is the longest one, Rob? Can you see? What, what do you have right like there? 641. What's the one above it? Uh, uh, they're all 641. We Except can't watch. for this 30-second clip Play right the 30-second one. See what it is. Let's see what the 30-second one is. Uh, go ahead. Play this clip here. In, but it's, Tell it's, me it's, what we disagree on when you do real time and we'll try to make that, that the topic. Because I'd love to, uh, as everything. I, I think, I mean, look, I, I think we disagree on the fact that I think that the public health infrastructure, despite being absolutely inadequate prior to COVID, did as good a job as they could have done no. during COVID. And it pisses me the fuck off when I see people shit on them. I, when I, I see, I see it must because yeah. you like, like steered it all the way back to that again, <laughs> yeah. like in... But it's, Tell it's, me what okay, we disagree right on. There. That when is when pretty about, wild to say that. That, that, that they we did a this. good job during COVID, even though it was inadequate pre-COVID. Do you think he's going to, Pat, does he have to say that, you think, or he genuinely in his heart feels that? Because this I, is Seth MacFarlane. This I don't guy know, is, he This is, is a there. professional actor. He's in that community. He is, he's in that space. What do you think, Tom? You look. You had to look like. I, I, I'm not. not I'm not. About, saying by the way, why don't you do this, but Rob? Why don't you go play the six minute clip, but just don't play the whole six minutes, and just play the first like. Go ahead and play this clip, and maybe fast forward a little bit. Go ahead. But then, why are doctors wrong about so much? Well, and well very they're often, right about a lot too. And ver- yes, and but very often people who aren't doctors have been righter about things. Um, like 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 what would be an example of that? I would think uh, this country did not allow for. Um, uh, natural immunity to be considered, and I know this is a subject <laughs> dear to your heart. Horrible like even angle. if you had the disease, you still had to get a vaccine. That's powerful, stupid. They don't do that in Europe. I think well, they do that here. There's mandatory vaccination in grade in schools. Right, but if you MMRs. already, but if you already had the disease, you have natural immunity. We didn't see that. Was, we didn't, that, that we was, didn't seem that was, to believe in that. That was here. debunked, though. I mean, that was that, that's I mean, not debunked. Don't that's you know not, people who've had COVID four or five times? I do. That's yeah. not natural immunity. There's no immunity there. You've had COVID five times. Watch what he says. Probably because you had too many vaccines. <laughs> I didn't have COVID. Did, did you, did the vaccine gave you COVID? Uh, well, that's certainly nothing unscientific about the fact that the vaccine, which does weaken you in order to strengthen you. Mm-hmm. Says do all vaccines. Exactly. Yeah. But while you're in a weakened state, yes, that's why so many people like me Pause it. got yeah. it, did not have it. I, I thought it was a great exchange. But but the point is, here's a point, Okay. Vinny, two years ago, that conversation is not being had. Absolutely I'm not. telling you right now, two, three years ago, that conversation is not being That would have been taken, Mc, down. taken down off the oh, internet. After, right? <laughs> but, but the fact that this Currently. conversation is being had, gradually we are being forced to go this way. You know why? Here's how this works. Think about the longest time you held a grudge with somebody. How long was it? Okay. I don't. We're not giving names. It I'm might just saying. Still be going. <laughs> okay, but but think <laughs> think about the longest. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, let me kind of bring you close. I'm talking family. I'm talking blood. I'm not talking like a friend. A friend, okay. I'm talking, oh, maybe even best friend. What is the longest grudge you ever had? Ye- like years. Give me a timeline. I 
Ten years. Go ahead, Honestly, Rob. Rob. Two years. And it was my best friend from seventh grade up until three or four years ago where we started arguing about the COVID vaccine. I didn't take it. My my employer mandated it. I said no. I lost my job. Your employer, it, Value Tim, and made you take no, the no, vaccine. No, no, no. Not this employer. <laughs> Freaking, let me talk to these guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. My previous employer worked in radio. They, yeah. they mandated it. I said no. My best friend worked for Live Nation at the time. He took it. We had several arguments. I tried to explain to him why I didn't think it was necessary for me to take it. Yeah. We didn't talk for two and a half years until he finally came back and said, hey, I'm sorry about that. You were right, and I was wrong. He Your said that. Friend yes. canceled. He you. said that to you. Yes. And wow. I, again, best friend for 20 years. Holy shit. You guys better now? Yeah, best friends oh, again. So, so, yeah. Shout so, out to your best friend yeah. for acknowledging so that the, you should have been better. What's the longest you've gone with a grudge? Family or a best friend? Couple best friend, years. Not friend. Couple, couple years. years. Okay. What's yours, Tom? It's probably family, about five years. Uh, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny's still holding when on to that going, But when it comes to friends and stuff, and th this past 2023, I called the two people that I was not even talking to, and I initiated the, hey, whatever it was, I'm sorry, I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. One never got back to me. The other one just two days okay. ago hit me now, up. Now, let, let's categorize grudges. Yeah. Okay, let's categorize grudges. One grudge is what? Hardcore betrayal. That's permanent. Forever. Mm -hmm. Set that aside, right? Let's set that aside. We're not, we're not going to talk about, well, why don't you go and apologize to him? No, bro. That's betrayal, okay? Bye. That is gone. All right. Let's put the other grudge as what? You're offended. Cool. All right. Let's put that over here. Let's put the one in middle. Disrespected and did something that was a real <clears throat> stupid thing that one or the other person did and they apologized, right? How long can we go with a grudge? Two years, two and a half years, three, I don't know. It ain't 50 years, okay? So what's the point here? Dude, America's so sick and tired of holding grudges against the other side. They want to sit down and say, dude, I don't hate you as much as you think I do. Yeah, you and I had different things with vaccine. Why do we let the mainstream media make me think you're a horrible person? Why do we think the mainstream media make me think that you're an idiot for not taking a vaccine? You know what, bro? I effed up. Yeah, I effed up too. All right, cool. You want to have a drink here? Let's smoke a joint. And that's what Bill Maher is doing here, right? Yeah. I don't know if America can go for too long holding a grudge. I don't think it's a natural thing that we have in our bodies. Some of us, again, what's betrayal? You can't, like, you know, a snake, uh, uh, I saw something the other day, a snake betrays you, and then they shed, and then they may look a little bit better, but they're still a snake. Yeah. They're still going to betray you. If you keep, uh, you know, forgiving a snake in your life, you're the moron, okay? That guy's DNA is to betray you consistently over and over and over again. But for everybody else, you know, in this community, that guy's a Democrat. So guess where Seth lives in? He lives in Hollywood. 100%. What does Hollywood look like? Oh, God. Uh, Hollywood is him. They're invited to the same parties. They're on the tabloids. They're on all the magazines. They're being talked about. You're in that space. The managers, the CAA, the WME, the, all that stuff. He is in that community. What do you expect him? What do you think the people around him believe? The same exact thing he believes in. What is Bill Maher on? He's sitting there debating conversations, challenging all this other stuff. The fact that we're having these conversations as crazy as this sounds we are getting closer to each other this doesn't mean we're going to be a hundred percent over it it just means we're making progress this is a very good sign when you see these two guys talking to one another are you going to say no, something I, no, I, yeah. I agree but I, but when it comes to the like the powers that be though the one that he's talking about that's the the science the fauci's the president saying it's a winter of death it's a war and like, unvaccinated that's a grudge but I, I don't not, give but up that's on that's not your friend though remember i 100%. said family or friend that that's not a friend that is a divider i have a list of people whom i watched how well they divide oh my god I got a list of, I can, you know, in who's my... Near, who's one of the top ones? I'm talking in my personal life oh, and okay. business. There's a okay. few guys, and I, I studied their playbook. Yeah. I'm like, wow, you are so good. And I called them out one time, and I said to his face, I said, hey, you know, this is what you do. You know that, right? You do da 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 I watch to, you To do. divide people. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> I said, and say, you do da 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 And he's like, you know, no, no, you, you think so. I said, no, nah, man, I've seen you do it to this guy, to that guy, to this guy, to that guy, to that You're so proud what you do. You're so good at what you do. <laughs> So with that guy, that's not a friend. That's not a grudge. That's a dark human being mm -hmm. that I'm not trying to be friend. I'm talking about somebody you love, care about, friend, Got it. family, care about. That now you're saying, I hate you. How the hell did we get here? What happened? Did you truly betray me? Maybe you did. Okay, then you're in this category. Don't worry about it. We don't need a friendship ever again. In America, yesterday the, the Tico and Dylan are saying, so dad, what do you think about our country being called SA? I said, what? 
He said, yeah, America's SA. I what said, the hell what is that? that? SA. What, what? So I'm like, okay, here we go. Another FNAF book you read, Five <laughs> Nights at Freddy's, <laughs> that I have to sit here and learn about another character. He said, no, we're, we're, we're SA. I'm like, what the guys? Wait, please, say, like, up, fool? He says, no, we're the states of America. We're no yeah. longer united. Oh, oh wow. Damn. That might have been me, Pat. Tico and Dylan. Have said that. Yeah, Tico and Dylan, they're like, yeah. we're no longer USA. We're the SA. We're the states of America. Wherever they picked it up, maybe I they think have it might have been me. Bad, bad influence. That's of my boy. Well, I mean, but, hold on, but it's not bad influence. It was, it was true. Freaking it's true. And he's already dividing states my States of voice. America. I'm holding a grudge Biden right now. I'm telling you publicly, DSA. me and Vinny have a grudge officially today. <laughs> oh, no. All right, let's go to the next one. Large number of Americans want a strong, rough, anti-democratic leader. What are they talking about? So this is a story from the conversation researched by <clears throat> Ali Haney, College Center for Political Participation, revealed that approximately one-third of 1,500 uh, respondents expressed a willingness to support leaders who would take uncompromising decisive action, even if it meant violating democratic norms. For example, respondents were asked if they believe that the only way our country can solve its current problems is by supporting tough leaders who will crack down on these who undermine American values. About a third of the respondents agreed or strongly agreed with such ideas. Approximately 90 percent of Republicans would support tough leaders who crack down on groups perceived as undermining American values. While ha over half of Democrats held similar views, almost half of strongest Republican Party supporters and over a third of strong Democratic Party supporters endorsed the idea that it is acceptable to bend the rules for political goals. Interesting. To bend the rules for political. And this is the chart, by the way, if you're looking at it. So if you look at the strongly agree, strongly disagree statement, the only way our country can solve the current problems is by supporting tough leaders who will crack down on those who undermine the American values. Strong Democrats, you see uh, uh, what they're saying, green, strongly agree. Okay, interesting. Uh, uh, not strong Democrats, a little bit. Lean Democrat, okay, not that much. Independence, 19%. Lean Rep Republican, 27. Not strong Republicans, 26. Strong Republicans are like, no, bro. Hold these mofos accountable. I want them going to jail is what I want them to be, right? So what do you think about this, Tom, when you're hearing a story about the fact that American people, maybe is this caused by a Joe Biden presidency of two years where they're like, dude, have some kind of a backbone. The freaking Middle East attacked us 78 times in a few weeks in the month of December. You don't do shit. And now we have to sit here and bend our back and apologize. Maybe we should do something about it. Tom, your thoughts? Yeah, this has been below the surface for a while, and now it's showing up. What, what it says is that people all around the world, especially Americans right now, crave a strong leader speaking with clarity who will do something. Strong leader speaking with clarity will do something. You can look back in history and see how did, let's forget about Mao, and let's forget about Stalin, forget about uh, Hitler. Let's look at Mussolini as a case study, Pat. Mussolini told people he would make the trains run on time and he would help rectify what was going on in the Italian economy and he got democratically elected. Now, he turned out to be a, a bad guy, but the point is when you see elections like that, when people have had enough, they are craving that strong leader speaking with clarity and authority who's going to get something done. And this doesn't surprise. And right now, damn straight, the Joe Biden presidency has been sort of a last straw of wishy-washy Washington. Now Americans are, are starting to speak like this. You went over the strongly agree. Look at the agree. If you add the 22 strongly good point. agree— and the 37 agree. 90%. That's 59% of Democrats said, you know what? I'm in. That's the line that I look at. The strong wow. Democrats. 59% who said strongly agree and agree. You know what? You get what he's I'm doing. in. Exactly. And I was just going to say that's that's the where I'm going with this. We all know that, especially if you're on the Republican side of the aisle, you look at strong as an authoritarian type of leader you know some say somebody will say authoritarian some people will say strong but he's definitely authoritative meaning like he ain't messing around so we all we already understand that what is it almost 90 percent of republicans want a strong leader we get that but the democrats the democrats you when you, when you look at someone like an obama you know nobody called him strong you might have said strong you might have said that he was charming or well-spoken or empathetic but he wasn't a strong leader. And the Democrats are even looking at Joe Biden, frail, 
old, senile, some may say. Vinny's already diagnosed him with dementia based on his medical 100%. reputation. But what we, can, what we can all agree upon is that he's sort of feckless and ineffective and definitely not strong. So when you see Democrats out there being like, give me a badass mofo out there, that is a telltale sign that America's yearning something a little you bit mean, more. You mean like what, what we had with Trump when shaking everybody's hand and ripping their arms off, slapping Putin, yeah. hitting Kim Jong-un on the shoulder? You mean that strong? The guy that didn't care, the guy that was just talking shit, that was actually an alpha? So how about Weird. What, didn't we have that? Now you guys want it back? Exactly. Obama, what was his one word? Hope. Change. Hope. Hope. Change. Hope. Yes, we no, can. No, 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 no. The first, no, the first postage stamp thing, Obama, yeah. hope. And what is the first word out of Trump's mouth? Make. Make. Wow, good point. Make America great again. What was Joe Biden's slogan? Uh, what? Sleep. Who are we? <laughs> <laughs> is it nap time again? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah. Hope versus make America great again. Hope, yeah. make. But we had, we, listen, but, and Adam, strong just going back to that point, with clarity, we had but- strong, and listen, besides the feelings, everything was kind of good until COVID, and now look, mm-hmm. now look, would you, would you guys say, I want to know from all three of you, is Joe Biden going to go down as one of the worst presidents that we've had in this past four years? Be honest with yourself. What do you, uh, is that, is that I'm, like I'm a trick a, question? No, 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 I'm being genuine. From everything that's happened from the day he got in to right now. Are you we, joking or are you serious? I'm dead serious. Of course he's going to go down as one of the worst presidents. Thank you. Who, who would you, who would you put but above the question, him? you don't need to ask me though, you need to ask Democrats. Yeah. They need to do that poll because his, his approval rate Rating right now is 39 percent do you know there's never been a president that's one at 30 30 in the 30 percentile nobody ever ever they're all one one time one timers okay they're all one timers and by the way trump is in that group as well mm-hmm. okay but there's never been a person that's one at 30 percent he's at 39.3 yeah. percent right now 55.4 is this approval rating i'll just add one more thing um, we always go back to that wall street journal article where they said the decline in american values right family values uh community service religion Everything that's sort of been declining in America, there's definitely something permeating in America under the surface that's been basically been exposed where every just sort of normal semblance of any human being in America, Amer- proud, of, proud Americans are looking around, they're like, what's going on around here these days? We're so focused on identity politics and gender and chicks that have dicks that we forgot about that exactly what's the major issues in this America, not culture wars that, is, that, that are affecting America, actual wars. What's going on in Ukraine? What's going on in Israel? What's going on around the world? North Korea over there. Taiwan potentially happening. What's going on with the debt? What's going on? Americans, the, the fastest growing religion in America is no religion whatsoever. Less people are having kids. There's so much going on in America. You know, we always, that cycle of uh, weak men create strong times, strong times. I, I, we all know this thing. But there's something happening in America where even Democrats, you know, the loving, empathetic, they're like, yeah. Now we're not playing that game. The Bill Mars of the world are arguing with the South McFarlands of the world, and they're basically drawing a line in the sand. They're like, yeah, this ain't exactly classic liberalism. This is a Democratic Party I'm not used to. So there's something happening right here. We just need to be careful that there's not actually an authoritarian in office, but, you know, the media will do a good job. Which of, is of why I gave the example that. of Mussolini. Yeah. And, and b- by the way, check this out. So a lot of talk right now is being being, being brought up about – Nikki Haley as the VP, okay? So Nikki Haley as Trump's VP, she doesn't reject the idea, says uh, they work well together. Nikki Haley, when asked uh, about the possibility of becoming Trump's running mate in the 2024 election, responded, President Trump and I work very well together. Why? Because I told him the truth. While she didn't categorically reject the idea, she emphasized her intention to win the Republican nom- nomination for president, stating, I've never played for second. I'm, gonna st- I'm not going to start now, despite the openness. To the idea of a Trump Haley ticket, there's opposition within Trump circle. His son, Donald Trump Jr., expressed reluctance, calling Haley a puppet of the establishment in Washington, D.C., and a favorite of the billionaire class. Trump himself previously referred to Haley as bird brain in a post yep. on Truth Social. Tom, <laughs> thoughts on uh, Nikki Haley as a VP? Do you think that's likely to happen? No, I don't think it's likely to happen. And here's the strategy. I bet I went back. It's funny you say this. Um, I went back and I was looking at Nikki Haley's quotes and I was looking at her you kind of a campaign position statements and stuff. And at the beginning of her campaign, where she was trying to legitimize her ability to stay on stage, she was really critical of Trump. I believe that her camp, if you look at what they were reading, they thought he was dead. 
<clears throat> they thought he's not going to be on the ballot. Too many of these court cases. And remember, we've crossed the lump. It's like, he's still here. Well, now, you know, never, never mind Bragg in New York. Now we have Georgia. He's still here. Uh, nothing's been convicted yet. He's still here. And now we've got state Supreme Courts and what's going on. He's still here. I think she thought he'd be gone and she was negative on him. And she now, I believe, is positioning for VP now that she's got enough leverage in terms of where she is in the polls. I think she's trying to position for a spot. And I think the people and the money around her want her to be that VP. And they want her to be the Dick Cheney in heels to do exactly what Dick Cheney did with Bush. You know who she reminds me? And I think, that's, I think that's the positioning. And I think that's the play. And I think that's what's showing up right now. You know who she reminds me of, Tom? Let me tell you who she reminds me of. She reminds me of, uh, 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 I'll text you the name. You know who she is. She reminds me of somebody in the insurance space, snobby, know-it-all, entitled, degree, been around the block. I haven't texted it to you yet. I will in a minute. Uh, snobby, entitled. Do I have your attention, Tom, or are you? In <laughs> yeah. He's I'll on OnlyFans. I'm telling He's you. on OnlyFans. Come me. on, Tom. Yeah. Tom, get off so, OnlyFans. So, Be here with so, us. So to me, she, for to, she, she gives me that vibe. You know why she gives me that vibe? And I may be wrong. I'm so glad being wrong with this. I'm totally okay with that. Because she has presence on stage. She's very confident. If nowadays you, as a presidential candidate, don't go on podcasts, I see you as snobby. If nowadays you as a presidential candidate don't go sit down with other podcasts and talk and open up for an hour or two, do long form, I see you as you're hiding something. Guess what she hasn't done? Type in the word Nikki Haley and podcast. Go on YouTube. Let's just kind of check her out. Go type in there Nikki Haley, okay? Nikki Haley and podcast, all right? Nikki Haley and podcast. What podcast has she gone on, okay, if you were to look her up, okay? What podcast has she done? I don't see any podcasts. So you know what that tells you? So the average person that's listening to this, you know what Nikki Haley's telling you? You're not good enough for her to come and talk to you. Because if you're a podcast listener, if you're listening to this, if you're not a mainstream cable listener, mm -hmm. she's trying to tell you you're not smart enough for her. She's trying to tell you the only people she – that have earned the right to listen to her speak are the people that are on mainstream media. That's what she's telling you. Now, it may be wrong. Maybe she's going to go on the podcast or no now, but she doesn't want to do it. Listen, it, it, do, do I think DeSantis loves doing podcasts? I think he hates it. I think he can't stand doing podcasts. Personally, I think he, doesn't stand, he can't stand doing podcasts. Has he done them? Yes. Do I applaud him? Yes. You know why? Because he's willing to go talk to you, okay? Do I think RFK likes doing podcasts? I think he does because I think RFK is that confident. I think RFK has put me down anywhere. I'll talk to anybody. Do I think Trump is willing to go and sit down with anybody and talk to anyone? 100%. Any day of the week, he's not afraid of sitting down with anybody. He'll go sit down with anyone. Nikki Haley... I, I want to like you. I want to trust you. But the vibes you give me is you look down at people who consume podcast shows and uh, you think you're above it. Again, maybe I'm wrong. You just give me that vibe of an elitist entitled, has been controlled by the people of all education and decrees. And I'm, I've spoken to so many insurance executives like her the last 20 years. And they are some of the most annoying people to talk to. I may be wrong. Again, I'm willing to be wrong. I'm willing to sit down and say, damn, I actually like this girl. I actually like how she is. Mm -hmm. But she gives me the vibes that you guys down there, you know, like in these corporate executives are on the 43rd floor. They never come down to shake hands because oh, it's the peasants. It's the peasants. That's yeah. the vibe I get. I, it's, not, it's not attractive to me. I'll, I'll add this. Uh, you're definitely not wrong. Uh, because I would label. Well, I don't know. I may be wrong. Now, I'm, what I'm, I'm letting you know. Judge okay. Dirty right. Executioner, right here. You're here we not go. wrong. Because wh who is uh, feuding with Nikki more than anybody? Vivek. Vivek. Mm -hmm. Because one is established. Oh, that's another name I forgot even tell. He'll go to any podcast. That's my point. Anybody. He's in restaurants exactly. talking. Like, anybody. That anybody. guy yeah. will go anywhere out You can tell that guy loves out, America. Dog. And by the way, yes. he's richer, more successful, more yes. educated, smarter. Correct. And he'll still talk to anybody. Because exactly. look at it this way. If you just want to juxtapose Nikki versus Vivek, Vivek will go anywhere. He'll go on any yeah. podcast, and mainstream. He'll feud with anybody. Nikki's establishment. She's going on the mainstream media. She's so much more establishment than Ron DeSantis is. Okay, she's going nowhere. She's the anti-Vivek. That's why those two are feuding so much. I know that Trump called her bird brain. She's definitely not bird brain, but she's definitely a war hawk.
Okay, my biggest concern with Nikki is that she's willing to go attack Iran, basically go to war with China, with Taiwan, defend Israel, fund Ukraine. She's basically Halliburton <laughs> times on steroids, okay? So do I think that, that Trump would pick her to be the VP? I don't. Do I think that if he did call, she would pick that? She would pick up that phone call 100%. I think she's an opportunist. I think that she's um, someone who's basically looking to social climb or politically climb. And I think she's also sort of the ant the exact opposite of Pence. I don't see her being a bootlicker for Trump. I, I don't. Well, first of all, I don't think he would pick her. But if he did actually pick her, I would lose a lot of respect for him because he's claimed from the beginning to drain the swamp. She is the swamp. Okay. And by the way, if mm. he does... If, if that does happen and he goes through, I would have a food tester on all the – I wouldn't trust that girl at all because guess what? God forbid if they go after him and for some reason they impeach because you know that's what's going to happen right when he gets in if he gets in. You think she's going to pull gonna an, pu She's going to She's going to pull an LBJ? She'll pull an L – dude, why wouldn't she? Because then I, I don't know about that. All I'm saying is – But she becomes a president. Yeah, I'm just I, saying I, I don't trust I her. I get that. I just – to me, she yeah. just gives me like – I you know you go to, t to these parties, networking parties, and you're – talking to people and it's like so, so yeah so yeah okay. and they give you that look you know the look so so they oh, walk yeah. and they have this, and, and this oh, nigel yeah, yeah. okay yeah okay oh. yeah so you went over here oh, so i went God. to the school mm -hmm. the fucking <laughs> like a, the vibe to me you know the, pat's fired up if he's no, the listen word. i can't stand elitists i mean i'm with you i cannot stand elitists i can't stand people that they think they're above other human beings she gives the vibe of thinking she's better than other people. And it's not attractive. I'm telling you right now, it's not attractive. When, when you're able to do something like that, you're, you know, you, you're not willing to go talk to people because you think you're who and, and what? Who convinced you of that? We choose. You don't choose. But somebody has convinced her to believe that's what it is. So that could mm -hmm. be, it could be the people behind the, where it's the, the Koch consultants. It could be the money people. Go ahead, Tom. Money. Yeah, I think you hit it. But you were about to say it, Pat. And you're exactly right. I'll give you four words. Consultants control establishment arrogance. Follow the oh, line. So unattractive. All the consultants are out there that make millions of dollars and they make a percentage of yeah. the ad spend. What do they do? They want to control the candidate and they want to control what they're doing. And they are going to traditional media, making big ad, big ad buys, going on TV. Vivek over the weekend says, I'm not getting return on TV, so I'm putting my money into the marketing efforts and things that give me a return so I can see that I'm moving votes to me. So consultants, they want to control the candidate and the advertising establishment. They want to go to established meeting, media. There's no value for them to come here the consultant value, the con the candidates, if they understood the depth and passion and emotion and our ability to move votes and what's happening with podcasts, they would be a, they would be a, there'd be a line at the door every morning. But instead, that's not it. And guess what? When you put those three together, it's the arrogance of yesterday. You can't negotiate with them. You, it's right. You can't negotiate. Can't negotiate and it's with the them. arrogance of yesterday. Trust me. Consultants you, control establishment. What a great arrogance. way of putting it. It's old. You you you've sat in rooms and we're negotiating with people like this, Tom. How are they to negotiate with? It's impossible. It was terrible. You know, <laughs> the, the first, I remember meeting some, and there's a couple that. Don't give names. I'm not going to do. There's a couple where um. I didn't feel there was a racial <laughs> element because there was some racial equality at the table. Um, other times I thought, is this just, is this maybe racial? Other times it was just, <clears throat> man, this is just arrogance. And then I would get to things where you and I would talk in the elevator afterwards, and I'd be like, Good Lord, these people need to get out more. The new America that yeah. we were bringing to them for, for was a diverse consumer. It's unattractive. And it was, and then by the time you get to the lobby, I, I said, okay, it's not racial. It's not, you know, uh, you know the preference. difference between it's not ignorance. It's just arrogance. You know what's the difference between him and uh, the Sant her and the Santis? What's the difference between her and the Santis? He actually is. I mean, they both wear high heels. <laughs> <laughs> if we're gonna, wow. okay. I mean, well, <laughs> it's not even baseball sorry, season. Sorry. And that one's Adam, over the fence. I had to. I had What's to. the biggest difference? What's the biggest difference between <laughs> DeSantis and Haley? DeSantis was at least willing once or twice. Yeah. To to dip his toe in the water with um some of the podcasts, this one yeah. and others we know. 
And you know when no. I saw that? And, and, you know and, when she, I, and she won't even touch it. And you know when I saw it? But you know when I saw that arrogance, that elitist that you're talking about? When Vivek was holding her foot to the fire and checking her, the camera was just on her. She wasn't looking there, and she was like, like she, I, I felt that vibe what? of I'm better than this. Uh, I'm not even going to respond to that. What's the biggest difference? Bro? You're a scum. I, I, yeah, I, exactly. I, I trust DeSantis. I trust DeSantis. I just think DeSantis is not good on camera. But I trust him. I think he's a good guy. I, I, I don't relate to elitist, snobby, bullshit, I'm better than you to come and talk to the average person type of people. And that's her. I mean, my brand, when I look at her, in my eyes, when I look at her brand, that's her brand. Mm -hmm. Her brand is I'm better than you. I'm smarter than you. I'm the elitist. I make the decisions. You follow my lead. I know what's good for you. So I, I don't. Let I'm, me ask you this. Yeah. Okay, so let's put Trump aside for a second. We see that, that you've interviewed DeSantis. We've had Vivek here. We've had RFK yep. here. You've experienced with these people. Clearly, you're not a fan of Nikki, or at least the elitist approach. mentality. The approach. I'm okay. not. And I don't, think, I don't think that's the way to win. Okay. Yeah. So you see in the polls, uh, she's plus five on Biden, right? So mm -hmm. Trump is a little closer. Mm -hmm. If in a million years, somehow, and I don't see this necessarily happening, it could happen, Nikki versus Biden— would you even consider like, Biden? What kind of a question point? is that? I'm just asking. No, you. What kind of a question? You, you just laid no. into Nikki. I'm not. I'm not laying into Nikki. That I. If, she, if it's her against Biden, what are you, What are we talking about there? I'm no. All I'm question. saying to her is, your brand, Nikki, your camp, whoever that's watching this, you guys come across as arrogant, conceited, elitist, and it's unattractive to a guy who loves America, who worked his ass off in America. You come across as elitist, arrogant, you're better than me, and I don't like it, period. If that's you and it's always been like you, it's unattractive. And I don't think I'm alone. I don't think I'm alone. I think there's other people that feel the same way as, as I do on the way you guys are. That's what I say. If it's her against Biden, it's not even a question because what, what Biden's done to America last three years is a shit show. So that's not even a conversation I would be having. I just don't like like, listen, with my kids, if my kids give a sign, a single, we went out to dinner the other day, a relative that doesn't live with us, mm -hmm. okay? This was two months ago. Jen will remember this. This relative that we see once every other year or something like that, and we take him out to a nice dinner. This relative goes like this. Excuse me. Oh, my God. Oh, no. To the server. Adam. The, the, the waiter looks at me. And is so polite and gentle and kind to, to the person because that's with me. Mm -hmm. And the waiter leaves. My kids are sitting at the table. If you already know how I feel right now, yeah. you have no idea how I feel. Just telling you the story right now, my body's in pain. <laughs> I can tell. So the waiter leaves. I look at the person and I look at my kids and I say, listen, never for the rest of our lives, do we go like this to a person that's working to make the food better for us? We don't ever talk like that again. And I looked at the person and I said, we don't do that. I don't know if you do that. We don't do that kind of stuff. You in called them out right there. In and then front of my dad, in front <laughs> wow. of Jen, in yeah. front of everybody. And this is a person we love and it's a relative. I said, we don't do stuff like this. And I said, Tico Dillon, I swear to God, if you ever behave like that in front of me, you don't even know what would happen if you behave like that in front of me. We don't do stuff like this. Then I got up and I walked past to the waiter and I said, hey, I just want to let you know. This is my table. It rep represents me. We don't talk like that to people. Makes sense. Respect. I gave him a 50% tip so he don't have to. He understands that the respect that we got for them. She gives me the vibes of this. Ooh. I don't like that. I don't like that vibe. Now and, it makes sense. and to me, uh, I don't roll like that. You got to give people respect. I'm a voter. Everybody else is a voter. When a person, so why do people love Joe? Why do people love Dana? Think about the people that we, why do people love Elon? Because they're authentic. They're real. They but they, like have the, they, they have the ability to be an asshole to you. Yep. Yes. They have the ability to be like this. And they're like, hey, how you doing? Yep. Well, wait a minute. Who are you? You're just because you're on a debate stage? And, and, and you went and sat on the board and you got a few million dollars from Boeing? This is what you want to do? Nah, man, that's not what... The last thing we need on America right now is this kind of a mindset. We need a mindset of, how you doing? So what's on your mind? What do you think? What's, what's up, going on? Da, 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 da. You doing? That's what, what we doing? need on America today. We don't need... 
We don't need any of this stuff, unless if you're dancing. If you're dancing, go like this all day. <laughs> I don't care if you yeah. want to do it at a Persian you know, wedding. If, all day long, do it. And, and, and I'll add to that and amplify it with, with personal experience. If she's doing this, it, Nikki, if you're doing this because you're being led by the consultants and you're being coached into this, this is not the path to the heart of the average American and the people that need leadership in this country. Mm. I met you with Beth Van Dyne at the event in Dallas, Texas. We talked for about 15 minutes with an associate of mine that we were there, and I didn't get this vibe from you at all. And now what I see and what I see in the candidate, I'm with Pat. It's like, oh, oh, is this, is this the way it's going to be? And if you're listening to these consultants, because there's a lot of dogs out there, these consultants that are charging millions of dollars, taking a skim off the ad buy, you know, this is not what America needs. And if this isn't who you are and you really want to connect with the people, it needs to start now. Unattractive. Anyways, okay. Uh, let's go to the next story. Uh, let's see which one. Uh, let's do this one here. This one's a... Uh, very interesting, and it's going to cause many of you guys to want to move to California. Uh, and by the way, I just looked at the order. God knows how many of you ordered it. I, I, it's about to, we would still ship it out to you, but it's about to sell out. Gang, those of you guys, here's what I said to you. This nice. is what we're doing for today's podcast. I, we called it the year of chaos, 2024. It's already a chaotic year. Anybody who orders just today, this is not going to be the rest. It's just today because it's the, it's the first podcast of the year. I want everybody to sport the future looks bright. I don't want to give the people that are the fear porn people the benefit of the doubt. I want leaders to stand up and give confidence to everybody. The statement of the year this year is future looks bright all day long. If you order one of these future looks bright hats, uh, Rob, you got the whole thing, the, the discount code PBD Podcast 2024, all lowercase together. I'm going to drop in another hat like this and a future looks bright hat. For, we, for us to sport. I want you to go to work. I want you to go to the gym. I want you to go outside for people to say, you really think the future looks bright? Absolutely. Why? Because we're leaders. Because we're leaders. So go place the order. We still got a few of these left, specifically these, the camels, the one that I like to wear, future looks bright. Rob, put the link below for people to have as well. Okay. California becomes the first state to offer health insurance to all undocumented immigrants starting July. January 1st, California will offer health insurance through Medi-Cal to all undocumented immigrants, regardless of age. Their expiration will, uh, make, uh, expansion will make ex- approximately 700,000 undocumented residents <clears throat> between ages 26 to 49 eligible for full coverage. California has gradually expanded health coverage for undocumented immigrants over the years, starting with children in 2015 and expanding access to young adults 19 to 25 in 2019. The state views this expansion as commitment to health care as human right. While there have been concerns about the strain on the Medi-Cal system and provider access issues, studies have shown that undocumented immigrants use fewer health care resources than, un- than non-immigrants. Tom, thoughts on this with California? There's a couple things going on here, and people need to hear the truth. This is a campaign <laughs> slogan coming out of the mouth of Gavin Newsom. They have been providing health care coverage to undocumented immigrants for years. There have been major hospitals, and Pat and I come from L.A., so we know a little bit about L.A., you know, well covered in the L.A. Times, well known down there. King Drew Medical Center, which is now closed, has been replaced by MLK. Downtown hospital providing critical care to people that come in from everything from an overdose to a, um undocumented immigrant who's trying to get you know, some, some care and coverage for a child with pneumonia, and they're not turned away. And instead, what happens is that was provided under Medi-Cal, which is basically Medicaid in California is called Medi-Cal. It's, you know, Medicaid. We all know what that is. That's basically um, health care provided to people who are, are in poverty or too poor to afford it. And so what's happening now, oh, we're just going to give you health insurance officially through Medi-Cal. But it was already being covered by the state because the hospitals didn't turn them away. But what the state has done to the hospitals is turn down what they're willing to pay for the service. Oh, an x-ray, we're only going to give you $11 for that. (laughs) And what happens is when the state says, okay, 
You're all getting health care coverage. Yay, if my I'm an undocumented person, my kid breaks his ankle playing soccer, he can go to a hospital and get coverage. That, on the human side, is good, right? Now, it's not good that they're undocumented and hear other stories there. But now the hospital's told, yeah, you get $11 for the x-ray and uh, $54 to uh, put the bone back and then um, uh, give you $75 for the cast. The hospital looks at it. It cost me $305 just to have them walk in this place. And I'm going to get 175 back. And if you scan down, here is an article from the L.A. Times about Himalayan Co- Hospital says it could soon be unable to pay its bills. Why? Go to paragraph number four. Here we go. One, two, three. One of the biggest challenges is the fact that emergency department has been deluged. Deluge means flood overwhelmed. Thank you. With four times as many patients as initially expected. That's a problem because, wait, 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 here it comes. How are we giving the, the undocumented health insurance through? Medi-Cal. Here comes Medi-Cal because Medi-Cal, the California Medicaid program, does not fully cover the cost wow. for providing emergency services. <clears throat> so Gavin Newsom is bankrupting his own hospitals for the sake of a headline to look good to the voting block. Are you kidding me, Tom? I'm out. <laughs> so so how do you, how, how do you do how do you do this and so, so so I'm a hospital owner I own a hospital okay I come back and say hey dude what are you doing you own a hospital with a permit in California, and I will not sign your permit unless you take Medi-Cal and you take How do you pe- expect me to stay profitable, Gavin? I don't care. If you want your permit, Pat, Mr. Bet David, sign here. But but what, but how do I stay in business? That's not my problem, Mr. Bet David. I will pay yeah, you this so much I, for I don't the services. Think, then, then if that's the case, I think the hospitals are going to come together and they're going to say, you're out of your mind. They're going to they're have a conversation with them to say, "Are you want us to shut down hospitals? King Drew went out of business and was replaced by MLK Hospital, a major hospital in the shadow of USC, in the shadow of UCLA. Big medical schools went out of freaking business and was replaced by <coughs> MLK Hospital. Um, you know, I used to think that SoCal... It stood for Southern California, yeah. but it's become clear and clear that it stands for Socialist California. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I used or to always get in, I used so to get in, California. Yeah, exactly. I used to get in arguments with our friend Ricky and he would be like, all oh, the Democrats, bro. And I was like, yeah, I don't I don't see that in Florida at all. You know how it is here. Like most people are pretty moderate here in Florida. And I didn't really understand the like the the, the 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 deep divergence of how left and right people in California. There's a deep deep divide there because the socialist programs that have basically come in in California, as Ricky calls it, is so palpable that just doesn't exist here in Florida. That way, that why Ricky and I would always argue. I'd be like, "Why do you hate the Democrats so much?" Because I see what's going on in California with the trans <laughs> stuff the socialist stuff, and now the medical stuff that's going on here, we're in Florida that doesn't exist. As Ron DeSantis says, you know, Florida is where woke goes to die. California is woke, was where woke goes to v- Survive. live. Okay? Yeah, right. Survive was going on there. Everything that DeSantis did with basically the trans stuff and basically the, the commercials, we all know what happened right there. But when it comes to, to health care, obviously one of the biggest issues – Obamacare, Trump, John McCain, the thumbs down. Yeah. We all know what happened there. But, you know, the, the question of whether health care is a right or a privilege, you know, still unanswered. But what we do know on that is this, that government run health care is a recipe for disaster. Talk to anybody in Canada it's that wants some good treatment. Like, it's a disaster out there. Talk to anybody that runs with, you know, get the government out of my bedroom, get the government out of my uh uh, hospital room, anything that goes on with that, universal health care would be a disaster. I didn't under, fully understand that situation from a national perspective, but let's look at um, California as a case example to see what happens. You got to keep your voters let, healthy, though. That's why he's doing private it. private companies too. compete. You got to keep your voters healthy. I know, but, but listen, I, I said this jokingly earlier, but it's exactly what it is. So imagine if all of a sudden Apple started giving non employees ID cards to enter the building. They're going to eat everything. So, 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 so think about what I just said. Yeah. Hey, moving forward, Apple, a privately, a publicly held company, three trillion dollar company, give or take, we're going to offer everybody in Cupertino an ID to come into our cafeteria, whether you're an employee or not. Tell me logically <laughs> how that makes any sense. Purely logically, it doesn't it? Doesn't make any sense. That's a perfect example. How, what do you mean you're going to offer immigrants who are not here legally? 
the same benefits of the people that work to come here legally. Tell me how that ID card makes any sense. Mm -hmm. What is the big deal of me being a California resident? So if that doesn't work for a company, how does that work for a state? Well, those are two different things. How are they two different things? Who's still paying for it? Somebody has to pay for it. They're not coming here spending the money. Who's paying for it? Tax not you. Yeah. you. I'm the paying California. for it. You and I are paying for it. Yeah. But so, Pat, where's your empathy? But no, no, where's your no, heart? Where is no, the way? But that's what I'm saying. That's no, the argument. But here, yeah. No, but here's my thing, though. And, and you just made a great point. The people of California are going to do nothing about it. What, are you just going to sit on your hands and not do shit? That's the people's responsibility to say, hell no. Yeah, he's the governor. He makes the, the final decision. Where are the people at? You should be, dude, California should be lining up, not for a, a, a climate protest and I'm, we're going to stay in the road because, you know, the whales are dying. No, get in the goddamn streets. Sorry, that's the Lord's name in vain. Yeah. And fight for, the, are you crazy? I'm paying for somebody that doesn't belong in the country. But let, let, I, let, I, me get get let me give you the insurance. good news at the very least. The good news is this. If you look at what's going on on our border, no one's coming across. There's no caravans of people yeah. basically invading, running. There's, that that doesn't invading. exist. It's Let me not go a into problem. that story, actually. Yeah. So one why are we even worried about yeah, something like this, guys? Right. Drop so it. Let's, put, let's put this right at the end. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're not voting, you're an idiot. Because when that hospital closes, that emergency room is not available for you with full health insurance and a credit card to pay the deductible Bingo. either. Bingo. Either. All right, here we go. Here's on the, on the border Semi-sarcastic comment Adam was making. Here we go. Democrat, Democrat mayors of Chicago, New York, and Denver reach breaking points from migrant surge. New York City, Eric Adams emphasized the strain on the city's resources, stating just last week we had 3,900 <coughs> people who arrived here. If you do the math, that's potentially 16,000 a week, uh, uh, 16,000 a week, um, a month that we must feed, clothe, house, and educate. That is what the breaking point looks like. Chicago, Brandon Johnson highlights the economic burden on the city, saying we have reached a critical point in that mis this mission that absent real significant intervention immediately, our local e econo economies are not designed and built to respond to this kind of crisis. Oh, really? Hmm. Oh, really? Denver's Mayor Johnson then reveals a backlog of court dates for asylum seekers until 20, ready, 27, resulting a potential cost of $160 million, nearly 10% of the city's budget. What percent? 10% of the city's Holy budget. Holy crap. Exactly. So, so then White House, of course, you know, because this is not really that big of a deal. No. White House says... Border surge is uh, not unusual. You know, the White House downplays the current play uh, surge of migrants at the border, describing it as a seasonal phenomenon. Press Secretary C Catherine uh, Corinne Jean-Pierre stated, and we're, uh, you know, we're at a time of the year, well, you know, where we're seeing more at the border. I mean, come on, folks. And it's not unusual. <laughs> this is a migration system that has been broken for decades. Despite record-breaking numbers of border encounters in recent months, with daily arrests, ready? 10,000. Not... Not, not crossing. Mm -hmm. Daily arrests, 10,000. The White House maintains that there's nothing unusual about the situation. The eight to 10,000 migrants caravan heading to the border is dwindling in numbers, but many migrants are finding alternative transportation methods to reach the border. Nothing to see uh, here. Let no, me no, just say something. There's two lines in here I want to see. Two lines. Chicago's Brandon Johnson. <laughs> absent real, quote, quote, absent real significant intervention immediately. <clears throat> Translation, make this immigration stop. That's what he's saying. Absent real significant, okay? White House, systems have been broken for decades. <clears throat> oh, it's not our fault. It's been broken for decades. Yeah, Rob, I'm going to have you pull this up, but don't pull it up yet. So we all know that far right-wing um, mainstream media company, we, you already not know it in your head. Um, they commented. It was their main story over the weekend, okay? Okay. Um, Rogue, these are, these are the headlines that they did. Rob, don't pull it up until I tell you. Rogue buses drop off migrants by the thousands in major cities with little notice. Okay? Rogue buses. December migrant surge at the southern border, the largest in more than two decades. Okay? Um, migrant crossings are spiking. See what it looks like on the southern border. Wow. They live in San Diego. Migrants pass through their backyards almost daily. Obviously, this right-wing media... Okay, is just trying to enhance their message here. 
And Adam, who is that? Adam, Fox, and Fox always says this. No, What's okay, your point? Okay. What's your point? Rob, please pull up the mainstream media outlet that basically was pulling this up. This was on the cover of CNN, guys. Rogue uh, buses. Okay? Oh. This isn't your Fox News, Breitbart, Drudge Report reporting, okay? I assume. This is I'm freaking so CNN over the weekend basically saying, yeah. Nothing to see here, guys? Yeah. No. There's something to see here. What it turns out to be is these sanctuary cities are, 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 are basically hemorrhaging. They cannot take all these migrants. So when you see the White House and your good friend, your dear friend, Corinne Jean-Pierre, oh, basically amazing. say nothing to see here. The Numbers are not spiking. I'm sorry. Left-wing outlets, as including CNN, are reporting this. Okay? James O'Keefe, Ashley St. Clair, friends of ours. They're, t they're, they're going down to the border. They're seeing what's going on at the airports. They see what's happening. So uh, the veil has been lifted, my friends. Oh, by the, yeah, go, Kush, go ahead. Kush. Oh, I was just going to say, too, I've been, I've been seeing videos. They, 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 they did one report on, on Fox that people that are living in New York, taxpaying, you know, good Americans, having apartments, migrants are showing up to their doors, knocking on the door, begging and asking for food. I just sent Rob another video of downtown Manhattan, Venezuelan illegals that are in the country in new york they don't want to stay in the hotel because they're they're buying um five five to like six hot plates like uh those, those heated things for food time and then they're selling them to construction workers it's shorting the hotels of all electricity look at this dude this dude's recording in new york they they took over his uncle's 16 wheeler and they're living in the 16 wheeler just played so, so you can show the kid rob look Patrick, that's that's this is where that's in New York. These migrants, <clears throat> look at that little kid. They're living inside of the back of 16 wheelers, and he's like they're using the money for a scratch off lottery tickets underneath. Physically go into that trailer with children. They can't go in there. Hello. We cannot physically lock the trailer because children are in there, and we definitely can't drive away with the trailer. That's the whole family. Yeah. Look, no, does, she have, does the baby have Jays on? The back we the baby chilling, chilling. To figure out what's going look, on look, the whole family in there shows up. to make these guys want to live in the trailer. Look, like look, like someone suggested. Those are, those are, in I my have those. Section. Those are Jordans. Okay. We went there. Now you can pause it for one someone, second. So, so Adam, basically, they're they're, they're illegals. They're mm -hmm. in the hotel that they're they're letting them stay in, but they're hooking up all these hot plates to sell to. I get the hustle is, is is there. It's shorting all the electricity, so they'd rather leave and not be by the rules and live. In some, that's some guy's property. Ridiculous. And then if the, once the video keeps going, you don't have to play, Rob. There's 30 to 40 scratch-off tickets. There's, they got money. They have cell phones. And they're chilling. It's like, when are we going to admit, like, enough is enough? Mayorkas and all these rats, they don't care. bro. And, and now, we're at the point of no return. How many have come in so far? Eight million? In these past three well, and a half? The problem is we don't know the numbers. We know that it's more than ever. And it's insane that problem. people aren't getting mad about something like this. People well, get more mad about trans rights than th like this. Thank this you, This is going to come bite yeah. in the ass This is a way soon. bigger issue than, than Dylan Mulvaney. 100%. If I could add one more thing. Go ahead. There's a couple different things going on here. Number one, the vast majority of these people are basically fleeing their countries because there's they're just economic woes and no ability to make money there. If you want further proof that capitalism is better than communism, look no further of why of who's coming to this country. So the number one country, and it's not even close, is Venezuela. Venezuelans, hardworking Hispanics, our friends that, that I know, I have a friend, ton of Venezuelan friends. Amazing. They are fleeing communist, socialist, Maduro, Chavez regime to get the hell out of there. Yes, they're coming from Cuba. Yes, they're coming from Haiti. Yes, they're coming from Guatemala. Shout out to Mario. Yes, they're coming from Honduras. Yes, they're coming from Nicaragua. But the vast majority of these people are coming from Venezuela because they have no the, they, they have no economic ability to basically move up the totem pole. But then here's the caveat. And electricity we, and water all that. on and off. All exactly. Day. Like but here's world. the caveat here. We just named all those countries and they're fleeing them because of poverty. Why are people from Russia coming in? Why are people from China coming in? Why are people from Iran coming in? We're China What's everywhere. going on here well, in this situation? Because well, they've caught people from other countries terror. other than these Central American and South American countries. Well, you countries. nailed that, Adam. They're coming because they know. And guess what? What's an, another uh, incentive? Nobody's going to stop you. You're going to come in. And, oh, by the way, if you go to California, that, that guy with the slick back hair, he's giving you free insurance. 
What do you mean? Why wouldn't you yeah. want to come? How many more incentives? And oh, and by the way, it's all a plan because now once the election starts coming at them, they want to do something to kind of disrupt everything. All those people that you're talking about from all these different countries, there's terrorists that 160 that we've caught that are already here waiting, just waiting for the go. And that's that's the year talking about the year of chaos. Just wait and see. Just wait yeah. and see what's going to happen. And meanwhile, meanwhile, the White House says the border surge is not unusual. And nobody checks her. When Stop she, it. Nobody has the Stop balls. It. Nobody has the balls during that press briefing to raise their hand and go, hey, Kareen, with one of your lazy eyes, you're full of shit. You're lying. If it was during. You went after her eyes. I hate her. Everything could, you could do, you went after the eyes. I, I, she bothers me so much because she. You know what a strategy it. is when you're playing poker? What? <laughs> Man, you, you, you know? Wow. You can't. Yeah. You can't. Listen, what did Scarface say? It's in the eyes, Chico. In the eyes, Chico. Yeah. I, all right, I, let's go to I, the I next one. I cannot her. believe you went after the eyes. But I okay, apologize. all right, so let's go to the next one here. I can't stand there. All right, for happiness, you oh. ready? In the new year, stop overdoing everything. You're working too hard, folks. This is what this writer from Wall Street Journal is telling us. Let's see, let's see what this feedback and this counsel is. Maybe we ought to just, just take the day off <laughs> by putting yourself through so much stress. <laughs> Here we go. Each new year, people tend to overcommit to self-improvement goals and engage in self-defeating behaviors referred to as the overs, such as overworking, overreaching, you know, overthinking, <laughs> driven by need for psycho psychological safety. Research indicates that overachieving and overthinking do not necessarily lead to better performance. Instead, they are associated with mental and Physical health issues such as anxiety, depression, addiction, overfunctioning can become a harmful cycle where the brain craves more overdoing. To, to break free, and by the way, in, I don't know how your body's feeling so far, but I'm, uh, I, I want to meet this person. Leave. To break free from the grip of uh, uh, overs, individuals can set new boundaries, <laughs> tolerate temporary discomfort, differentiate between danger and dislike, and recognize that they are ultimately responsible for their own sense of safety and well-being, leading to a healthier and more balanced life. Adam, why did you want the story? Look, there's a lot going on here. Um, so everyone makes New Year's resolutions, okay? We all know that. Everyone's going to work out. Everyone's going to do their best. They're going to eat healthier. Everyone's going to save more money. Did you know that actually the second Tuesday of the month, second Friday of the month, is a national holiday called Quitter's Day? Quitter's Day is a day, look it up, Rob, where basically people basically said, yeah, I've already quit all my New Year's resolutions, and it's time to get back on the ball over here. Oh, God. Okay? So Quitter's Day, there it is right there. Quitter's Day is a second Friday in January. Falls on January 12th this year. Basically, basically when all your resolutions go out the window. But here's what I would argue for happiness. Happiness to me is having meaning and purpose in your life. A lot of people basically think that happiness is just sort of just this thing where they just, I'm just going to, oh, shit. Oh, I was about Someone's going to do the conga? I was what just happened? Come on, baby, baby, do ahead. that conga. Jen, <laughs> Jen send it to me. me no, I don't want to distract. Happiness oh. is doing the conga. It is. Yeah. I will give you that. It is. But um, everyone's so obsessed with work-life balance, but I would argue that <clears throat> work gives you purpose. Work gives you meaning. Work, basically working with a team accomplishes something. So, I, I, this is, I might get on a little rant here right now. The Do biggest it. we talked about the COVID issue of being the sort of the uh, generational health crisis of our time. There's a bigger health crisis that nobody's talking about, or at least we're not paying the most attention to it um, that, as we should, and that is the men mental health crisis among the youth. Uh, meet the press, Kristen Welker. You know, good friend of yours, Ben. I love her. She actually did a great expose. Um, of what's going on in this country, especially among the youth. The Surgeon General of America called, called it the youth mental, health, youth mental health crisis, the defining public health issue of our time. Here's some numbers for you when you talk about happiness, work-life balance. This is why you need meaning and purpose in your life. The lifetime depression rates in 2015 were 19%. 2023, 29%. Whoa. Okay. Uh, adults who say a family member has experienced severe mental health crisis, 51% of adults here in America today. U.S. suicides, all-time high in 2023. 12 million adults have thought about suicide and 1.7 have attempted suicide. But, okay, veterans, you guys have two veterans right here. 
The Veterans Crisis Line has a record number of calls this year. When you talk about depression, anxiety, whether it's made up or whether it's real, it's pervasive in this country at this point. But the reason to that, the reason that there's a youth mental health crisis, it all comes down to social media, as this is what they've been attributed to. Hmm. Persistent feelings of sadness and hopelessness among teenagers in high school, 57% of young women, 57%, 29% of men. So double women, okay? 40, 42 states here in America, uh, their attorney generals, 42 out of 50 states in America have sued Meta. Because they're the owner of Facebook, they're the owner of Instagram, we know this. They have sued Meta for basically what they've done with Instagram and Facebook. 95% of of kids under 17, teenagers, use social media. 35% use it constantly. So when we talk about these crises, these health crises, whatever happened with COVID... The biggest problem, what's happening with America's youth. So I know this is a, a, a conversation about happiness, but happiness comes from having meaning and purpose in your life. And a lot of young people don't have jobs. They don't have careers. They're still in high school and they're on social media every single day and they're just not happy. Uh, I, <clears throat> absolutely. I agree. For happiness in the new year, stop overdoing things. America, start with your kids and put them on time budgets on social media and online. Living online and staring into the digital box for their ratifications and for their affirmation, which is what likes, followership, and everything else about social media is about, is why those 42 AGs went after Meta for good reason. It's time to build a thing called, what's it called? What's it called? A relationship. A relationship with your kids. See that your kids have relationships with other good kids. Because overdoing everything, yeah, let's stop with the overdoing online and overdoing social media and then focus. They pick a sport they like. They pick an after-school activity they like. And they focus on that. Focus is a, when they say overdoing everything, I disagree with part of that. Because when your kid focuses on something... I've had kids that focus on things, not the same things I focused on. I didn't guide it. I let God show me what were the proclivities of my girls, and they were very different from one another, and I get them to focus on that, and I give them support, and I keep them off of the, of the digital cesspool. And by the way, you know what's crazy? Two days, if you remember, uh, uh, Vinny, uh, <clears throat> I, I don't know if it was Aspen or if it was when we came, came back, uh, Tico watched Social Dilemma, hmm. and I said, so what would you think about it? So I thought it was very interesting. I said, what, what, what do you think was very interesting? Well, I said, well, I see how people are spending way too much time on social media and da-da-da-da-da. And, you know, he's just kind of like processing it himself. But I think a part about, first of all, this message here with this uh, uh, Wall Street Journal story about over this, over that, over this, knock it off. Anything big you ever do, you're overdoing. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're having kids, you know, hey, you're pregnant. Don't over-pregnant yourself <laughs> because under-pregnant yourself. What the? What do you want me to do? I'm pregnant. Like all I'm thinking about is being pregnant. When you're doing a startup, don't over-startup yourself. Under-startup yourself. No, you're supposed to over-prepare. You're supposed to over-achieve over any of that stuff versus just trying to be one of these, you know, no one – and by the way, the person that wrote this article in Wall Street Journal, you would not have a job with Wall Street Journal if the person that started Wall Street Journal wasn't overdoing it, just so you know that, okay? And you wouldn't have a platform to have this be shared at on Google, YouTube, on this podcast if somebody wasn't overdoing it, Julia, just so you know that. So, yes, I totally get it, and I hope it's working for you with your family and everything else that you're doing. But that doesn't apply to almost anything big that happens in life. Somebody went above and beyond to overdo it. You know, we finished a, uh, took Tico yesterday to the movies and we watched uh, this new rowing movie. I don't know if you've seen this new I rowing saw, movie. The the, yeah, the rowing movie that comes out about 1930s and Great Depression. They're broke and these kids come out of nowhere and they're the junior team and they end up winning state and then they end up winning the nationals and then they go to the Olympics and they beat Germany. Wow. And it's the most incredibly underdog. This guy's sitting next to me crying. I'm like, dude, what are you crying for? He's like, I just joined the rowing group at 56 years old. I, I relate to this because he showed me the app, 1.5 million rows I've done, and look at what these kids did. Oh, wow. These guys had to overdo it because they didn't have a choice, Julia. Some of us didn't go to a good school because our parents couldn't afford to send us to a good school. We don't have the choice of under or stagnant. We have to do over. And by the way, when you live in a life that you're, you're, you have this feeling of things can be taken away from you, 
you're always staying in that little bit of the paranoid uh, mindset, right? You're always staying in the little bit of the, all of this stuff could be taken away from me. What if I don't have this anymore? It almost causes you a little bit to be what? To have perspective, to have gratitude, and to realize, man, I'm so lucky to have what I have right now. You stop being arrogant and cocky about losing certain friends. You stop being arrogant and cocky about losing certain relatives. You stop being arrogant and cocky about losing certain opportunities. I'm willing to say it's actually a very good place to be at. By the way, Rob, can you pull up that Manek thing that uh, Kelly sent you with the different pictures? In the last week, okay, in, if I tell you during Christmas, within a week, I did over 100 Manekts with different people, okay? The stories, the most incredible stories. This guy just sent me Manek today. I did two Manekts. On Manek, you get to ask me any questions, myself, Tom, Vinny, Adam, any questions you may have. You can send it in a text or an audio, or a FaceTime, and have a conversation with. One guy wanted to ask about, hey, you know, I'm a, a $500 million company I've built. What do I do right now with the next phase that I want to go through exit? This other guy sends me a message today. I'm going through challenging times. My father died at his funeral. 3,000 people showed up within 24 hours to his funeral. Can you imagine 3,000 people show up? Wow. You're having conversations about parenting, money, finance. Manect is officially the app built by influencers for influencers where you get to DM somebody and you get to respond back. My last 150 messages, I responded back on Manect, they're all audio, which means I respond back to you in audio. I think so do you, so do you, so do Tom. Any questions you want to ask, we just crossed 100,000 downloads on Manek. This is officially becoming a networking app because you can DM people on Instagram. They don't have to get back to you, and they don't ever get back to you. 95% of the time, people don't get back to you on LinkedIn and Instagram. You know why? Never. What's in it for them? On Manek, they'll get back to you because you're paying for a response, and if they're, they're responding back to you isn't valuable enough, you get to put a one-star or a two-star or a three-star or... If they give you a valuable response, you're like, my gosh, that was a great feedback. Here's a five-star review you get to see on Manek. So I'm, I'm officially addicted to this app, Manek. It's the first app I check every morning when I wake up. Yeah. And, and can, I, can I say yeah. that but before uh, we go? It, mind you, I'm a comedian. I'm an actor. I'm a writer. Okay, whatever, whatever. I've gotten... I've gotten video calls from people that didn't have nothing to do with comedy, and it was just life. Like, I'm talking about life or death type stuff where I gave them advice. I'm not a professional in that field, but just the conversation and what happened with this person and where they are right now, bro. I I, I don't want to say names or what the circumstance was, but I, I wasn't, I was, I was like, why me of all people? He was just like, I because I know that he needed somebody to talk to. By the way, he's got all the money in the world. He's like, I just needed somebody to basically punch me in the face and I knew it was going to be you and the guy is doing way better than he is. Like, I don't want to say anything to get, it's ridiculous. That yeah. is, it's, it's ridiculous. That's awesome. I, Look, Manek has been incredible uh, for the for the people that ask questions that 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 need answers, the people we do phone calls with. But it's been even more incredible for us because we want to hear from you. We help you with your problems. Some of the best we see conversations. The, some of the best conversations. There's people that I've when I when I first met them, uh, they were struggling, and now they're thriving, and it's amazing. And they've and they've enhanced their careers, they've enhanced their life. It's so rewarding for both sides of the equation. And these are things that no DM is ever going to do. Amazing. And I want to give one major shout out. Shout out to the attorney that upcharged you for the half oh, hour yeah. Whoever that instead person of the is. eight minutes, okay, yeah. Pat? Because that guy basically created a behemoth, yeah. a monster called Manek. No, that's Thank how this whole thing got started. The guy, I had a seven-minute call with a lawyer, yep. and he charged me for 30 minutes. I said, why do you charge me 30 minutes? He says, minutes roll up. I said, I want to pay you by the minute. He says, that thing doesn't exist. Yeah. Oh. Eventually, we launched an app called yep. Minek. Do you have a minute to connect? Let's Manek. And now Manek's all over the place. So use the QR code, who you, whoever you want to talk to. Hit me up. Test me it up. out. Send a message up. to Vinny, Tom, myself, um, uh, uh, or others. There's a bunch of other people on there as well. And all me right. too, Pat. Thanks. Yes. And Adam. Adam. <laughs> next story. All right. Let's go to the next story here. And we can go to, uh, let's go to the boxing one. USA Boxing to allow trans women to compete against female boxers. What? U.S. Boxing has introduced a transgender policy allowing male boxers who transition to compete in the female category starting in 2024. Athletes must meet specific criteria, including declaring their new gender identity, undergoing gender reassignment surgery, and providing regular hormone testing for a minimum of four years following surgery. The policy comes after the International Olympic Committee, IOC, 
ruled in 2021 that each sport and its governing body should decide how to address transgender athlete participation. The move has generated mixed reactions as female athletes have raised concerns about competing against transgender women, citing feeling of being scared and unsafe. Finny. I, I, I genuinely thought last year, towards the end of 2023, the whole trans, especially with the trans sports thing, was kind of dying. They're doubling down. And like, and, and I want to ask one thing. So, well, let me, let me tell you the, the, the actual policy. So minors under the age of 18 must compete as their birth gender. All right. Thank God they're at least doing that. And weight classes outlined in the boxing rule book. USA Boxing will only communicate with minors with the parent or legal guardian present. But for boxers over the age of 18, that's eight, 18 years on your birthday, uh, a boxer who transitions from male to female is eligible to compete in the female category under these following conditions. Ready? The athlete has declared that her gender identity is female and has completed gender reassignment surgery. The athlete, for a minimum of four years after the surgery, has had quarterly hormone testing and presents USA Boxing documentation of hormone levels. They must demonstrate that uh, her, because she's tra he's transitioned, uh, total testosterone level in serum has been below 5 NMOL slash L for the past 48 months. And then the athlete's total testosterone level in serum must remain. It has to stay low. But here's my question to you guys. He, the, the bone structure and the mass and the, and the he's still going to beat the hell out of this female. Like, can we all agree to that? I can't wait to see oh, it, No, no, no I, I actually, this is, it's ridiculous because now, Adam, because me and you are betting guys, can you bet on this? Can you bet? And I want to. Who are you going to bet on on that fight? Who are you going to actually bet on? I'm, I'm gonna betting take on the, the dude. dude that used to be a dude that's yeah. playing the dude. That's who, <laughs> that's who I'm, because yo, think about it. Because yo, your strength, your bones, your mass, it is unbelievable that we're having. And mind you, this isn't some rinky dink league. This is USA S boxing. But there's you know, one thing. One thing that's happening here is good. USA boxing is saying, okay, <clears throat> enough with the declare on Monday, win on Tuesday crap that Leah Thomas did with the uh, Ivy League championships for swimming declare on monday win on tuesday yeah they're saying four years and you have to have gone through everything you just examined from the surgery to long-term hormone so what they're saying if you are totally serious and you go through everything and it's been four years okay fight as a woman but to your point you know height and reach are skeletal and are still there even if you've had the surgery to correct length they're even if, even if you've used the dick saws, Tom likes to say. Yeah, the surgery. But, 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 but Adam, ready for this? How, what What are you telling the the youth that want to compete and stuff? It's like, hey, listen, you could still do it. Just chop off your crotch and and wait four years and you'll fight. That's not a good role model. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what, you know what who's we... laughing at this? Dana White is laughing at yeah. this. Um, Dana White is sitting there saying, "No wonder." You are not uh, you, what you once were. Boxing. What? What? Do you, like, can you imagine Dana White now announcing, "Okay, moving forward within UFC, we're gonna allow transgenders to compete in a woman." What do you think is the likelihood of Dana doing something like that? Z no, zero. Not happening. Absolutely well, zero. Speaking of laughing, <laughs> uh, did you hear about Dave Chappelle's newest stand-up bit? Of course, I saw it. Did you see it? I saw the okay, whole thing. Okay, so allow me to to kind of encapsulate the story here. We all know that Dave Chappelle was calling out the trans community who got attacked on uh, in Is this California. the one that he walked off stage or something like that? Or? No, this, this was part of that that but, bit. But So we see what's going on with Dylan Mulvaney. You brought up Leah Thomas in Canada, by the way, now. They are now officially putting tampons in the men's, in the men, not men's, boys' restrooms. Boys. Men. Elementary school. Great. Okay? Because we all know that us boys, we get our period every month. Of I course. mean, that's just of obvious. That's normal. Right? All our kids. We, I mean, we get it. So, but Dave Chappelle, as he, as he does, he tells a story that you don't see it coming. Comedy's all about misdirection. So he tells the story. I'll try to tell it in a minute or less. He goes, uh, huge Jim Carrey fan. <laughs> huge fan. I never met Jim Carrey. Uh, but my buddy... Uh, the late, great Norm MacDonald was doing a movie with Jim Carrey. And he goes, hey, man, yeah, you want to meet Jim Carrey? <laughs> yeah, I would love to. And, but they didn't tell me that he was filming a movie at the time. Man on the Moon. What was the movie? It was Man on the Moon. Now, I know you're a method actor. Yeah. Jim Carrey got so into this role that he, even when they said cut. He was still him. He still was Andy Kaufman, yep. amazing comedian. Yep. 
Jim Carrey's hero. So he played him in a movie. So nobody told Dave Chappelle <laughs> that Jim Carrey was not Jim breaking, <laughs> okay, the Andy Kaufman thing. So he shows up, and Dave Kaufman's, uh, uh, Dave Chappelle's like, Jim Carrey, how you doing? Like, huge yeah. fan. This is Dave Chappelle fanboying over Jim Carrey. And Jim Carrey's like, yeah, hello, nice, hello. Nice, nice to meet you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Jim Car Dave Chappelle's like, <laughs> the fuck? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I came this here for Jim. This ain't who I thought it was. Yeah. Like, and he says, as much as this guy tried to pretend yeah. that he was actually Andy Kaufman, I knew it was Jim that he was Jim Carrey. <laughs> and he goes, that, my friends, is exactly how I feel about the trans Jim, community. Oh, he killed him. He okay? murdered him. As much as you're trying to be Andy Kaufman, gentlemen, you're really just Jim Carrey. <laughs> Okay, as much as you're trying to pretend that you're a woman, Dylan Mulvaney, yeah. we know you got a dick under that dress. <laughs> Nobody's buying it, especially Dave Chappelle. Yeah. So only as Dave Chappelle can do these types of things. And, and, and by well, the way, he can sell beer, but he can't box. Okay. And, and by the way, that leads to, oh. you know, you're hearing a, when you told the tampon story, you're not kidding about that story, yep. right? Canada passes laws requiring tampons in male bathrooms. What? They they passed laws to yep. allow tampons in male bathrooms. It's about time. <laughs> I mean, I was going to start saying something. <laughs> but I know Canadians. I know Canadians. I can't so let me it. read this to you. The government of Canada, under the uh, tutelage of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, has passed a law requiring all employees to provide uh, menstrual products or tampons in all federally regulated workplaces. The regulations specify that menstrual products must be in all toilet rooms regardless of their marked genders. This means that every female identified, male identified, and all gender toilet rooms will need to have menstrual products. The Canadian government's website reads, it explains that unrestricted access to menstrual products provides greater protection for menstru menstruating employees and makes sure that they feel safe to use a toilet room. The best reflects their gender. It further mandates that the, all employees must ensure the presence of a disposal container of tampons in all restrooms. Tom, when you hear the story, about, as, a, as a Canadian yourself, how, do you, how much do you support Justin Trudeau's decision? Here? Hey, you like it, eh? <clears throat> Justin Trudeau is bonkers. <laughs> and the provinces I line up with, going to Alberta, where there's a lot of oil and beef. Hello, Albertans. Hello, Calgary. You, you, there, there are people in, in Canada that, that find this bonkers just the way that we find it bonkers in our political realm. And this guy comes from basically the bonker family because you look back to Pierre Trudeau, his dad, and Margaret Trudeau, his mom. I mean, Castro, it's a real nice, good looking family. But exactly. Oh, yeah. And remember, Great Margaret family. Trudeau took off for a summer with the Rolling Stones. You know that. Yep. She took off. And that, that was our joke. Hey, did you hear Pierre Trudeau built a patio this summer? Really? Yeah. He paid for the concrete. Margaret laid the stones. Hey so it was a, that's hey a Canadian joke going back to the 80s, by the way. It. But I think it's I think it's nuts. I think it's nuts. And it's, it's literally nuts. It, yeah. Or <laughs> not less or, or something. It's just Trudeau pandering to the woke to say here I did something it's that freaking simple yep. and and now it's a a cost and an inconvenience and a lunacy to all of the various building owners everywhere they're gonna have to do this under law guys I don't have kids yet okay you know I don't necessarily know how the math works okay Tom you've got two girls Pat got you've two got, girls, got two, two boys. boys you've got two girls I was under the impression that all young boys get their periods. Yeah. I I just, that's well, what I thought. No, but you know what? It, when we were in high school, we all got, I remember when we all got our period together. It Vinny, was the worst. In gym class, we all had we, cramps. Oh, it was so bad. You know, you, I don't, but, but you no, know no, what's no, going but you on can, here? You know what this is saying, though? This yeah. is saying that girls that are like, I'm a boy now, are going to be in the boys' room we're dealing with their period. That's what that is. You know, you know that, right? Yeah. It's women that are going into the men's bathroom that need. It's just it's further proof that the ninety nine percent needs to basically pander to the one percent. And when I say one percent, it's like point oh oh one percent. When are we going to start living in reality? We're not. When young boys have tampons and menstrual utensils to basically, <laughs> when they walk into a room, when a 10-year-old boy, a 12-year-old boy, who literally has no clue what the hell that is, <laughs> they're just going to be throwing them at each of other, course, spitting them at each other. Like, 
it, it, it's going to be satire of the highest level. This is the movie. We are living in the movie Idiocracy. If you haven't <laughs> seen that movie, it's go a sim. Rent, it's listen, a sim. Go watch that movie, yeah. and it's literally what is going to happen. Like, we're almost there, but it's unbelievable that that, by the way, yeah. with all the problems that that idiot did with all the truckers and everything that Canada's dealing with, that's on your priority list. That's what you want to do. Shame on that. Well, Let's Canadians make that. Let me tell you. Tampons great, great again. Let me tell you. Trash talking athletes everywhere will say that, right? You can be a little bitch, but you're not a girl. Exactly. Ooh. Damn. Tom went there. Shit. Shit. Mic drop. Wow. Bailey Brook. Earmuffs, please. That <laughs> Earmuffs. Was, Earmuffs. Yeah. Earmuffs. So, all right. So, for the longest time, when you think about Thanksgiving uh, uh, games, when you want to have Thanksgiving, what sport plays on TV? When football. Okay. Football, 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 when you football. think about Christmas Day, what do you think about for the longest time? You know, basketball. it's always been basketball. Always. Well, Christmas Day was always basketball. And they would have a bunch of different things that would happen. This year, it was a different story. So I post a tweet this year. I want to talk about some of the numbers on NFL against the NBA, how the NBA is getting destroyed. So I posted this. I'm glad you have it, Rob. Perfect. So I get this from this one website. I want to give these guys proper love because they're actually classy guys, and they reached out to me, and and uh, I simply reshared whatever was in the score. I'll give it to them here in a minute. They're, they're somewhere there. Numbers don't lie. The current NBA regular season product absolutely sucks. NFL gets more viewers in one game than NBA gets in five games combined. Vinny, ready? <laughs> Times two. Watch this number. Go ahead. So can you pull it up a little bit so we can see the numbers, Rob? NFL's average viewership over three 2022 Christmas Day games was 21.9 million. That's the average, Vinny. The average of NBA game on Christmas Day was 4.3 million. By the way, during Michael, that used to be 8.8 million. Okay? Double. But it is what it is. So let's go past this. Rob, then go to the story. Check this out with numbers. George Carl decides to respond back to me. Okay? And he retweets, and if you don't know who George Carl is, he's got a thousand and eleven seventy five wins the in the coach NBA. Of the Seattle SuperSonics. Well, he's the, also Denver. This guy's been around the block. No question Denver. about it. Rob, and let's he, go back to the story. The he retweeted it. Not there. You were at the right place. Yeah. So, so right there. So here's a couple other stats from George Carl, the coach. By the way, as an MLB owner, your product sucks <laughs> worse than any major sport. Four hundred million, uh, four hundred fifty million basketball. Uh, uh, play basketball around the world, and the number's skyrocketing while 5 million people around the world play football, and that number's plummeting. Numbers don't lie. So numbers don't lie. The current, okay, so then I responded back to him as well. It can go a little lower. Yours There's more exchange. But let me show the numbers. Go up. Go up, Robert, right there. All right, watch this, guys. This is Christmas Day. NFL decides to start having Christmas Day games. Beautiful. Look at that. Raiders Chiefs, 29.17 million. Damn. Giants Eagles, 29.02. I thought Ravens 49ers would have been the most. 27.23 million. Look at the NBA games on Christmas Day. Bucks, Knicks, two and a half million. Warriors, Nuggets, 4.1 million. Celtics, Lakers, Vinny, Christmas Day. Five million, that's it. 76ers, Heat, only 1.3 million. And Mavs, mm -hmm. Sun, you're talking about Luka against Booker, against, you know, uh, Durant. One and a half million people. You combine all the NBA games together <laughs> times two, it still doesn't beat an NFL game. One okay. game. One game. Now the, the Heat are the defending conference champion, Jimmy Buckus, right? Nobody cared. Now keep going lower. Keep going lower. Now watch this. Jimmy didn't even play. So that so game. it gets worse. If it gets worse when I'm comparing those. So, so another guy responds back and he says, That's not fair because the NBA plays 82 regular game seasons and the NFL only plays 17. I said, No problem. Let's do that. If the NBA averages 4.3 million views per game in the regular season, the NFL averages 21.9. 82 times 4.3 equals 352 million views. The NFL only plays 17. 17 times 21.9 equals what? 372 million people. George Carl, being the fact that he's a basketball guy, I told Coach Carl, that's like a basketball player taking only 17 shots, scoring more points than the other guy that took 82 shots. Pretty embarrassing. Go a little lower, okay, when it comes down to the dollars. Keep going. When it comes down to dollars, I think it's a little bit above that with the dollars, okay? Oh, Here's a revenue. 2022, NFL took in $17 billion revenue. MLB, the boring sports that he's talking about, $10.5 billion. NBA took $9.6 billion. And MLS, that's a small little product that's coming up. It's at $1.5 billion. NHL is at $4.9 billion. He asks, 
I explain why I think this has happened. And number one, every league has to decide who its number one customer is. I think in the NBA, the number one customer is the player. They've shit on the customers. They've shit on fans. They've shit on clients that wanted that father that can only spend $600 a year to go to a game to watch LeBron play. He's probably taking a day off that day. That, that father that wants to take his kid, kid that he can only afford to go watch one game, that guy's not going to play 82 games a season. Are you out of your mind? Zion takes every other game off and he's getting paid the kind of money that he's getting paid. Number two, the NBA contracts protect players more than owners. And last but not least, Point number three, Rob, if you want to go to number three, if it's still there or not, like the NBA went woke during COVID and became a 100% political organization. Once it happened, you know what happened to their viewership last 10 years? They lost 50% of their viewership the last 10 years. Do you know what is the most viewed finals game of all time? Michael Jordan, 1998, against the Utah Jazz. 36, 38 million Was people. Was game six wow. when he had the flu? Yeah, when he pushed 30, off, it wasn't 30, the Yeah, started. Russell, 36, 37, Russell. 38 million people. You know how many people watched the last finals game? Game five or game six? 12 million people, 13 million people. The NBA product is dead as of today. So now, sports, business, all that stuff. Tom, I'm going to go to you first. Then I'm going to go to you. Your thoughts on what's causing NBA to do this? Is it dead? Is it NFL that much of a better product? What's going on with the NBA today? The NBA, it is true that all around the world you need, you know, Five pairs of sneakers and a ball, and you can play basketball. And so there's a lot of things happening globally. But here in the U.S. market, and let's just talk about the U.S. market, it's everything you just said. It doesn't represent, it's, it's not aspirational for the fan. I can't remember the last time I paid for tickets, and I used to pay for tickets all the time to go see the Lakers play. Hey, Dallas is in town. This is, oh my gosh, let's go see Dirk. You know, and I, I loved it. I and by the way, I haven't taken my kids to NBA games. Uh, and, and I think they've lost the heart of the American consumer, and they're running around the world to find new markets to make up for it because I, I think they know the issue they got. Adam Silver knows what's going on. That's why they're trying to open up China so much. That's why they focus on all this international open up because they see what's happening. And they could say, oh, well, you know, the shift to streaming and cable and all the cable companies going out and then Hulu and YouTube TV. Really? NFL hasn't had any problems with viewership. It's back. MLB has had a couple strikes that have really that that missed one World Series back in history, and baseball has always come back eventually because they know the customer and they're coming to the customer to put a great package out there. But for all the reasons you've talked about, the NBA doesn't care. They're just going for rights markets. The NBA is running around trying to earn rights money on global television and the globe there is a global appeal to the sport and to the US I have, fan, I have, I have an idea on when you. it's going to change screw I have an idea you. when it's going to change but go ahead well there's a lot going on here and um I mean this in the most respectful of ways I think you stated the obvious I think we know that the NFL is the behemoth that is now officially America's sport is no longer baseball but what what I applaud is you put the numbers behind it. You put in the work. It's like we had Usman here the other day. Amazing fighter, right? Awesome, ridiculous. Sure. I was like, what would happen if you fought Nagano? He's like, nah, bro. I'm not, I'm not. Like a heavyweight versus a middleweight or a lightweight yeah. is not a fair fight. Yeah. The NFL, especially on Christmas, during the NBA on Christmas, it's not a fair fight. Nobody gives a shit about the NBA right now. Nobody gives a shit about the NBA basically until – basically April when the playoffs basically start May and then it starts happening. And then the finals is typically in June right now. We're in the end of the NFL season. Basically people are jockeying for positions over the next few weeks. Next week is, is week 18. It used to be seven, 16 weeks, 17 weeks. Now it's 18. So there's so much stuff going on here. If you look at the world's uh, most expensive for sports franchises, seven out of the top 10 are NFL teams. There's only three non NFL related teams in the top 10 one we know a guy that's a part owner of one of them called the yankees then you got the most expensive for number one is dallas Man, that's yeah. even far you got yankees this is baseball golden state which they basically have skyrocketed over the last decades thanks to steph curry and then it's all nfl teams patriots rams giants bears raiders and then at the end of the uh list is who's the number next eight? Right oh my gosh yeah las, las vegas raiders so but nfl is um, there's, you know, there's only one sport 
that has a day, the holiest day of the week, some may say, that is dedicated now to the NFL. Okay, there's no day dedicated to the NBA. There's no day dedicated to baseball. Sunday is dedicated to one sport. And by the way, Saturday is dedicated to college football as well. By the way, shout out to the Michigan Wolverines going to the uh, national championship versus uh, versus Washington right there. But football is America's sport. Days are dedicated for it. And you put the numbers behind it. And, of course, someone like George Carl. I'm still NBA waiting coach. on. I'm going to push back, bro. Can for I, oh, five no, minutes, there, I'm waiting for a pushback. But, there, there a but there's no pushback. Oh, there's no pushback. There's no pushback. I'm just saying you uh, stated uh, the obvious. Yeah. Everyone knew but, this. But can you I put tell, the math can behind I, it. By, by the way, let me ask you a question. Let me yeah. ask you a question. What is a more – Rob, can you put this as a poll? What's a more exciting product that you like to play? Okay, watch this. Just a viewer. What product do you like to play more? Put soccer, put baseball, put basketball, put football. Not MLB, NFL. Just what game do you like to play? Okay. I'm actually, I don't want us to answer because we'll influence it. Mm -hmm. I just want to know what's going to happen within the first few minutes because I'm willing to tell you. If you have any opinions on this, do you, do you have anything well, to say? Well, about this whole situation? Yeah. Because you, you touched on it for one point, but I think we kind of just mulled over it. How much do you think the way that the NBA handled, you know, with COVID, and then you mentioned this in the tweet, LeBron James being the face of the NBA, the King James, during all of Trump's things, his attitude towards Trump when uh, that girl was shot and killed. I forgot um, uh, I forgot her, her last name, which, by the way, the cop was exonerated. The LeBron James tweeted and called for violence. He goes, you're next. Oh, to the Brianna, cop. How much of that woke that kneeling for the national yeah. anthem? Hold on. That anti-American sentiment. Just recently, he walked into the uh, to a game, Great sat point, on right. his ass and do, didn't do anything. The, a lesson learned from the Dylan Mulvaney. Well, Americans, America, we don't like that crap. We don't like that anti-American stuff. We don't want you pushing your gender crap on on beer. What a bi- how many billions of dollars did Bud Light you lose on that? And I'm telling you, LeBron James had a big impact on people going because, dude, I used to watch the NBA. Then have all that kneeling and all that. Oh, everybody's racist. America sucks. We're all nobody. You talking about this tweet, shit. right? That he took this down. this tweet and he took this down. You're next. And by the way, this cop was acquitted because. Uh, of the situation where he was legally like it was he, yeah. he got what happened sh- to LeBron for tweeting this you're next accountability no, absolutely yeah. nothing and you know what that yeah. is that's a felony if you're calling for a co- dude if you if you did that you're going to jail you know that right if you t- pointed a picture of a cop who's under investigation for a homicide and you say you're next you're calling for violence for that cop Patrick, that's a that's a felony. Yeah. Are you crazy? So, do, do you guys think that's a? He's going to retire at some point, and I can't wait. No, and but, but I think that's going to. Did you guys? I have things. two things here. I have two things here. Two things is going to change the game of NBA. By the way, what's the voting, Rob? I, I'm just curious to know what people are saying. What, what's uh, what's the? If the answer right is soccer, now, I'm, I'm going to be so disappointed. You then get ready to be disappointed. Thirty five percent for soccer, twenty six percent for basketball. 25% for football, and 14% for baseball. Okay, so baseball is last. Okay, fine. Watch this. Here's what I will tell you. I think two things are holding the NBA back. LeBron James and Adam Silver, period. Bingo. Because David Stern was a boss. You feared him. He was a liberal. He went to Columbia. I believe he went to one of those liberal schools. Can, can you check to see what schools David Stern went to? Type in David Stern because almost every one of these guys, they're pretty much they're liberal right. guys that went to uh, – uh, uh, Zoom in what law school, Rutgers and Columbia. There you go. Yeah, he went to Columbia. And then go to Adam Silver to see where Adam Silver went to school. I'm curious because Harvard. Adam Silver went to, uh, I think, also the same Zoom in. He went to Chicago and Duke. Okay, he went to Duke. Good for him. So for me, these two guys are part of the problem because uh, Adam Silver fell for a uh, a con organization called BLM and they wrapped BLM all over the place and we found that afterwards that was a con job okay those guys fooled you Adam Silver well, by, by and you were, you yeah. were naive and you fell for it and number two is LeBron James is a divisive face of the NBA you know when when you think about a face of the NBA you know who you want you want somebody like a I don't know Patrick like Curry. a um who's that Paul I, guy I Patrick, even, who's Giannis, that really? Giannis, Giannis. Is, you, you want a Giannis you want a Brady you want a Michael you want a Kobe you know, you know what Jordan did when it came down to an event that happened with uh, cops shooting and back and forth? He gave both, I think it was a Chicago PD and a black uh, a nonprofit organization, he gave each of them $5 bucks. Oh. You know what he's trying to say? Hey, here's where I am. 
Okay, I, I support both. Is that right there? Can you Google that? Michael Jordan pledges to give $5 million to African American Museum, and he gave $5 million to, I believe, to a police. Uh, 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 Precinct? No, no, to a police, some kind of charity that he gave it gotcha. to, organization to. LeBron is divisive. He makes the game unattractive. He makes it unattractive to watch, unattractive to follow. I haven't followed the Lakers ever since this guy joined the Lakers. I'm just not right there. Is this the one? Yeah, Michael Jordan donates a million dollars each to Institute of Community Police Relations and, and NAACP. You know what he's saying to you? Hey, guys, both of you are important. Go do your thing. Here's a million bucks. Yep. NAACP and Community Police Relations. I respect the cops. I respect. That's the premier example. He's not telling he's a Republican. He's not telling he's an independent. He's not telling he's a Democrat. All he's saying is, look. Both of you guys, here's some money. Go do something about it. LeBron could never, ever. All you have to do is come out and give salute to our military. All you have to do is come out and give a salute to police officers. All you have to come out and give a salute to what these guys make you feel safe to play basketball. He's not capable of doing that. And Adam Silver, unfortunately, you know, Roger Godell. We went hard, hard on Roger Godell during Colin Kaepernick. But you know what Roger did? He slowly realized, okay, that was a mistake. Let's kind of work our ways back to here. What happened to the NFL? Boom. Back at it again, right? Adam Silver has proven he's not capable of doing that, okay? Uh, I would be – you know what I'd be curious about? You know how we were at the RNC the other day in, in, uh, in uh, whatever the debate was in uh, Simi Valley? Okay, yeah. Were you, you, you were yes. there, right? And we saw a professional NBA player. You don't need to say the name, but you saw the 6'11 guy. You're like, oh, shit. And you want yeah. to talk to him for like 20, 30 minutes. What are you doing here? Um, yeah, I'm just trying to oh, learn, yeah. right? I'm just trying to learn. Really? Yeah, I'm just trying to learn. That's why I'm over here. Huh, interesting. I wonder if they did this poll. If there's a poll I'd be interested in is the following. What percentage of MLB players give to the left and the right what percentage of NHL players give to the left and the right, NBA and NFL? Which one do you think is going to be ma majority of the money being given to the left? NBA. 100%. And it won't even be close. Hmm. Out of all those sports, it won't even be close. It'll be NBA all the way at the top, majority money being given to Democrats. Yep. And it makes sense. Yep. It's a turnoff of a product. And LeBron has that, is, is rich and yeah. that victim. And you talked about this yeah. with, with Tico and Dylan. That victimhood mentality. Oh, it's a, uh, like, bro, relax because you're not a victim and you're making everybody feel like they're a victim, bro. P Americans are. Can we talk about a real victim to, to finish this podcast up so we can go? Yeah. Let's talk about a real victim. R Rob, can you pull up this victim deer in Aspen video that I sent oh, you? Oh, set this up? This. Can, can we set this up? Yeah, go ahead and set it up. Right, it's very important. Then you, then you take it. So, so we're in Aspen. The, the house that, that this guy, and I, dude, one of the best Christmases I've had, and I love you for, for inviting My me. Man. This house is like the, the dumb and dumber. It's like the sickest house. Bro, it's snowing. It's skiing. It's everything. We're already going to go ski. All right? We're, we're in route. Mario um, is going with Ethan, and they're leaving. Ethan, his son, looks back and goes, hey, Dad, I think, because there's two, there's a pool, there's everything. There's a, there's a lake. It's kind of iced over, and he goes, I think a deer just fell in the lake. And Mario's already leaving. He's like, what? He's like, are you kidding? He goes, no, I'm telling you a deer. Mario turns around, gets out. Uh, the chef, uh, Alper, he comes out, and he's recording this. And just to throw this out there, M Mario is in Aspen. He's a Guatemalan dude, okay? And out of nowhere, he yells at Ethan. He's like, bro, go! Go get a rope. And then, pal, I'll let, you t I'll let you take the story. He gets the rope and then play it from here. Go ahead, Rob. Just play <laughs> Mario, from right here. Mario, Press play. There's a Watch deer, this. A deer fell this in This is the an Aspen. Yeah. Go ahead. Watch this. Okay. Look. That's Mario walking. By the way, that lake, he steps on that. He's going down. <laughs> He's going <laughs> That's the deer. Listen. Race. One lasso throw. One lasso. <laughs> that's, that's Mario screaming. No, no. That's the deer I, I, screaming. I Watch this. Come on. He got it with one throw, Adam. Lasso. Did it up? That's Albert. How the hell did Mario He's get on it? the ledge. He's on the edge of the ice. That's the most dangerous part. Good job. Dude. <laughs> well, now we know how uh, deer sound. Uh, Look at this, dude. Uh, oh, it's dude, amazing, dude, Mario, bro. bro. Freaking oh, dude. 
The city of Aspen what? needs to send a letter to Mario what? Aguilar. Watch oh. this. The deer's yeah. freezing. The, the deer is about to die. Can't get up. He's yeah. trying to stand up he's on the ice, Adam. And his hooves like keep you know slipping. Watch what Mario does. As if he's done this 50 <laughs> times. Oh, oh, go. I'm watching this video. I'm thinking of local support, you know, guys coming from the city. And then I look at the camera I'm like, that's Mario. Dude. Look at this. A Guatemalan this cowboy. Just like a rest of it. Dude, and you can wow. tell the deer trusts him at this point. They have yeah, a relationship. Yeah, now they have a relationship. Dude, watch this. Bro. Watch Just this. Slow down. You're good. Let me guess. You're a hunter good. comes he runs into a fence. Deer. <laughs> he runs into a fence. Right. Yeah, a deer shoots him three minutes after. By so the way, the so so that's the, the day. day of the hero. I know this wow, sounds. Mario, that's I, by the way, I know this sounds like a. <laughs> yeah, right. What I'm telling you right now, like it's straight out of a movie. So that's Mario. The next morning, I get up. No joke. To walk outside. And my dad's like, go see what's outside. Rob, I just sent you the tweet. Pull up the tweet I just sent. It, 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 that's the one. Watch that one. Turn the audio on. Look at this. Look at this. Dude, look at this. This is the next day. Oh, I saw this video. Yeah. Um, They're all look here. Look at these guys. Surrounded by elks. Almost looks like a... They came to pay respect scene. to their yeah. godfather, Mario. From the movie. Leave the world behind. <laughs> It also looks like every hunter's dream. Oh, look at all that meat. Yes. Is that James Earl Jones' voice so or is that you? A couple hundred. By the way, there's 200 of them outside. Easily. It's they gave a prayer. Ooh, they Mario. saluted at Mario. <laughs> they made a certain unique chant. And they're just saying, we just want to thank oh, on behalf of the elk and the deer community. Thank you, Mario. I, I, don't, I, don't think people, you stop I don't think people realize Mario has never taken a rope and lassoed in his life. He threw it in one shot. If he doesn't get it in that one shot, that deer is dead. I don't even know if Mario's ever even been around a deer. No, dude. And then mind you, he's on the edge of the water, which is the most dangerous. And yeah. then he's like, Ethan, come over here. Come add to this danger. By the way, if they go in, it's a wrap. They don't know how to get out of that. Let me tell you something. Yeah. All right. I'm not, I'm not going to say any, you know, Mario just became a father. Yes. Okay. Uh, young Gabriel's, how old is Gabriel now? Maybe like six months? Less than six months? Less than six months. I don't know when a man and woman, after giving a child, when you go again. But when Mario's wife, Barbie, sees that video, <laughs> I'm just saying there oh, might be another done. baby oh, in nine months. It's already done. I'm just saying. Oh, you know, hey, what, oh, you didn't you know what lines you can officially use on your girl? I love it when you save deer. I save Bambi, baby. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? It's <laughs> Bambi and Barbie. <laughs> what do you mean when she sees the video? She's pregnant again. <laughs> yeah. she? No, 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 no. Don't stop rumors. I'm joking. Stop I'm joking. Anyways, I'm hey, all right. It's good to be back. Mario, you're amazing. Mario, Aspen, Barbie, Aspen, you. if you're listening, send this man. And a letter thanking him for what he did to the deer in Aspen. Folks, uh, Happy New Year to you. You already heard what I said at the beginning of it on Future Looks Pride. This is going to be a very weird year. Represent the gear of Future Looks Pride. Go to the gym. Wear it. Put the hat on. Tell everybody, I believe it's all going to work itself out. Don't let anybody put the fear in you. This is going to be a very, very special opportunistic year. We're looking forward to doing big things here together with you. Cannot wait to see you guys on the next episode, which is when, Rob? Are we doing it Thursday or Thursday. tomorrow? Thursday. Thursday. Is it a special guest or is it just home team? Thursday. Uh, Thursday, special we do guest. have a guest. We do have a guest. Perfect. We'll see you guys on Thursday podcast. Take care, everybody. Happy New Year. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Happy New Year. Come on.